Welcome to the Athletes and Culture Podcast. I'm your host, uh, Hannah McKendy, and this is my co-host, John Bull. So here on the- <laughs> I said that, John, <laughs> John Bull. John Bull. <laughs> <laughs> then why did I say it like that? <laughs> I said it like that and then I looked at you, John Bull. Make sure to get it like, right. Do you know what I mean? It's like- <laughs> <laughs> it's like jumbo here. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't know why I said yeah. it like that. So um, this will be the first uh, episode yeah. of the Athletes and Culture podcast. Um, I've done this podcast for a number of reasons. Obviously, one of them was to obviously highlight my story and what I've been through. Um, I had a long time throughout the lockdown um, to sit down and think... Um, I lost my job during the lockdown. Um, so I just kind of had to like sit down and think about my next step in life and things yeah. like that. And I also had a lot of time to reflect. Um, Cause obviously, like I said, I love sports, I love football, played it at a good level, played it professionally for some years. Um, and there was a lot of things that were going on in the football industry and stuff like that. Yeah. Some regarding youth team players, some uh, regarding first team players, whether it was racism, whether it was how a lot of things were handled. Yeah. Um, and I feel like it's time to give a lot of players in football or even in other sports athletes in general, that's what we call athletes in culture, yeah. um, to give them a voice, to voice their opinions unfiltered, um, but also to give them a platform where they can express themselves and also be able to um, get feedback from people or speak to people that are yeah. like-minded and things like that. Um, so that's... Um, one of the reasons I've st uh, decided to to start this platform. And obviously today we'll be talking about my story uh, the whole way from when I was a kid to now. Yeah. Um, my journey throughout uh, with Liverpool, going on loan and everything that happened throughout unfiltered. Um, so yeah. yeah, so welcome to the Athletes and Culture podcast. Yeah. That's so, a yeah. great summary to be honest. Yeah. And you know, touching on, touching on a few things you said there, it's it's the journey you've had as well yeah through through football and what how f football's treated you yeah yeah and uh you know there might be a few people that are tuned in they want to understand okay Hanok McCundy what's your where have you been yeah, who yeah. you played for mm -hmm. so do you want to give like people a quick little right I've been at this club then I went here yeah um quick so where you've been start with me uh obviously born in Congo grew up in with England at a young age grew up in Sheffield Played to the league for a number of years. Um, went on trial at Sheffield Wednesday and Sheffield United. Um, and then, well, I thought I'd signed the contract with Sheffield United and then family moved to um, to live in Manchester. Yeah. And then obviously with, with, with what happened at the time, because my parents were living in a different city and I was still too young, I couldn't stay in Sheffield and uh, carry on my contract with Sheffield United. Yeah. Um, End up getting picked up at Liverpool when I was 13 and played at Liverpool all the way up until just for my 21st birthday, so up until I was 20, so I was there for like seven years. Signed a youth team contract, signed a two-year professional contract. Uh, went out on loan to Northampton my first year and Partick Thistle when it was in the Scottish Premier my second year. Yeah. Um, and after that, after I got released, um, tried to go on, on trial at other like professional clubs. Didn't really materialise the way I wanted it to. Um, I'll get onto that later on. Yeah. Um, and then end up dropping down to non-league um, to try and get my career back up and running. But I got quickly realised that that's not really for me. Yeah. Um, so obviously I'm at a stage now where um, I'm no longer playing professional football and I'm no longer trying to chase that professional football dream. Right. Um, I've come to that conclusion. It's took me a long time to be fair. Looking back on it, maybe I should have took the decision a bit earlier. Yeah. Um, it probably saved me a lot of headache and a lot yeah. of pain and things like that. Um, but it's, it's a tough one if you love the game, though. Yeah, yeah. You know, if mm -hmm. you if you're deeply in love with the mm -hmm. game, how do you tell someone who's running around the pitch, yeah. playing five aside, um, you know, pretending he's Ronaldinho, <laughs> yeah, absolutely exactly. loves the game yeah. to mm -hmm. to quit something? And it, it's that thing again. You get a taste for it. Yeah, you get a taste of nearly just hitting that mm -hmm. Premier League. Yeah, yeah, yeah top level mm -hmm. how do you then tell someone yeah. all right you've got to give that up yeah. or maybe look to something else yeah i think that's what um 
kept me going, you know what I mean? The, the levels that I reached at, the players that I trained with, played with, what I got to see and experience is what kept me going all these years. But then after yeah. a while I had to sit down, be real with myself, um, look up, look back on the goals that I'd set myself when I decided to take football seriously. Yeah. And then to see how long it would take me if everything was to go my way and go right, how long would it take me to achieve those goals? Yeah. And would I be satisfied with it? Um, I think that's one thing that people need to also be aware of. Like, would you be, if you achieved this, that, that, the other, yeah. would you be satisfied with it going forward? Um, and then for me, I came to the conclusion that I wouldn't be satisfied if certain things happened, even if it right. did go my way. Um, so I've took the decision to obviously stop chasing the professional football dream, yeah. uh, trying to make it again um, and focus on other things. Um, so obviously at the moment I'm working um, not in the football industry officially, um, but obviously I still speak to current players, yeah. ex-players and players that are looking to make it. And that's yeah. one of the reasons why I decided to start this platform um, just to give people a voice, you know what I mean? I think yeah. you'll, you'll get a lot of interesting topics, a lot of controversial ones, a lot of sad ones, a lot of funny ones. So um, there's going to be a lot to to look forward to and yeah. to tune into over the next coming weeks. Um, and I look forward to to, to giving out, um, yeah. and presenting those kind of shows and stuff. Yeah. So. We've got a great dynamic, haven't we, of yeah. uh, episodes coming mm -hmm. up. Um, like you said, we've got some controversial ones. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got some really, really positive ones. Yeah. And um, just different dynamics of the game. Yeah. Because the game's, a, it's, when I say game, football, is is a beautiful game. You know, it's yeah. corny and people say it, but it, it does give you different perspectives depending on who's, you know, who's experienced you yeah, yeah. having a conversation about. So definitely. Um, for you, you know, if we strip it right back, because your story, <clears throat> you know, we we grew up playing as well when yeah. we were younger, mm -hmm. fourteen. Yeah, and I didn't know the extent uh, of your story until a couple of weeks back or yeah, a couple yeah. of months couple back months when ago, you did yeah. the yeah. the podcast, yeah. the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and you even said some of your friends. I, same way, I was shocked yeah, when yeah. you were saying certain things. Mm -hmm. They were shocked. You were getting a lot of people texting you yeah, when yeah. you did the podcast yeah. saying. Wow, I can't believe you've been through that, and you, you kept went through that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, give us, you know, give us a little uh, insight into when did it get serious? When did it get like, um, like when did it turn into a job? When it, when did it? Maybe not a job, but when did it? When did the fun of being Ronaldinho on a five side yeah. pitch change? At what age was it? Roundabouts when you were getting the scholarship, or was it? When you got the pro. Do you know what? I think it sometimes comes down to opportunity, I think. But I think for me, I felt it's maybe when it when I got the pro. Right. Um because although um when in the youth team it is serious, so I said playing for a club like Liverpool, yeah. Even in training, every single day it's serious. <clears throat> You've got some of the best players, if not in the country, in the world. Because yeah. at the time we had players from America play some all over Europe, play some Africa. So we had like literally um, some of the best players. And I remember at the time when we was in the youth team, in the whole country, our youth team had the most number of international players. Oh, wow. um, so like more or less, I think it was like most players in our team at the time represented their national team. So at the time I played for Congo, um, England, I was on standby a couple of times, but I mainly played for the Congo national team. Um, so we were, we had a really, really talented youth team um, at the time. Um, and at the time when it started feeling like a job, it was when like, it was almost like they did, when certain coaches didn't care about kind of what you was going through, you were just expected to do certain things, right. you know what I mean? Um, and it, obviously at the time, if you're expected to do that, obviously when you're playing football, you're expected to train and to play. Right. But then for me, it's like, it gets dark when you're just training and then you're not given the opportunity to play. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so I could, at the time I could work as hard as I wanted to, but I still, I knew at a point that I still wouldn't play because I had that conversation with me, um, which like I said, I'll be able to to get in, get into that 
like further down yeah. the line once we get into the full st- st- story. Yeah, and I, and I was gonna ask, you know, before we get into that, there was there was a period of where you when you did sign, things mm-hmm. were going well. Oh yeah, you know, mm-hmm. you know, for a perspective yeah. for people listening in. Mm-hmm came up from the Sheffield Academy yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and then you got signed by Liverpool yeah, yeah. and you got signed with um, the likes of like Raheem as well. So he was in your year group yeah, yeah. as well. So Raheem was a year younger than me, but he used to play play up. So they signed him from, uh, he came from QPR. Yeah. I think Raheem at the time was 15, I think. Yeah. So what had happened was I'd, uh, cause at the time I was living in Manchester, Liverpool used to pay a taxi for me every single day after okay. school to go to football after school and whatnot. And then in, in my final year, in year 11, they decided to move me schools from Manchester to Liverpool. Yeah. So I ended up moving to live in Diggs, like amazing experience. And then at that time, Raheem got signed by Liverpool. So he moved up to live, uh, we lived in Rainhill at the time. Yeah. So we went to school together in Rainhill, but obviously trained together, played together under 16s and in youth team. So um, at the time, like I said, um, like, came up with a lot of great players, the yeah. Hames, the Connor Cody's, uh, Jack Robinson. So there was, there was a lot um, of talented lads at the time. Um, so obviously at a club like Liverpool, you you, you don't last right. if you're not any good. You know right. what I mean? So That's true. I was That's able to, to stay there for seven years. <clears throat> Amazing experience. Uh, people that worked in the club, like people that have been there for years. Yeah. Like, like I said, the receptionist, the dinner ladies and all the, the kit men, all that kind yeah. of stuff like amazing people you know what i mean they made the experience there like enjoyable you know what yeah. i mean so well, i think one thing people will be interested in is a running question we have in this podcast and because everyone's everyone's experience is different yeah but your experience of signing your first professional contract mm-hmm. with liverpool you know what was that like how 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 did it sort of transpire how were you told what was um, the process so it was it was a bit of a hit and miss, so because um, that season in the youth team, I think if I remember correctly, I only played like nine games. Um, at the time, as if you can tell, I'm tall, I'm six or five. Yeah. So I was going through some injury problems. Okay. Um, so I was really suffering with a groin injury. Um, but like it, it had me out for months. So if I remember correctly, I think I only played like nine or 10 games. Right. Obviously I'd been at the club at that time. I'd been in the club like five, five years, six years. Um, so the, the coaches already knew me, they knew what I, was, what I was about. And then I remember I played, it was the last five games of the season that I played. And I think if I remember correctly, I scored in like every single game or something. Yeah. But at the time, um, I was I was looking to leave because I didn't think I'd be offered a deal. Right. Um, so I was looking to leave. Um, we had options at the time. We had Leicester interested. I had Leeds. Uh, I'd been out on loan to Barnsley on a youth team loan for yeah. a month. Because obviously when I came back from my groin injury, I had to get fit and stuff. So I went out on loan to Barnsley for a month. Um, so at the time I was looking to leave, like I said, um, but the people at the club, seeing what I did the last couple of games and they just weighed every option up. Uh, yeah. And um, I remember getting pulled in and that's when they told me, they said, look, we've had interest from Leicester, Derby, Nottingham Forest, Sheffield United, Sheffield Wednesday, cool. Barnsley. So I'd like, yeah. I think I had like seven or eight clubs that yeah, I was yeah. interested. Um, some of them were offering three-year deals, some of them were offering one-year deal. Two, so it was, it was a variety of things. Right. Um, so we had a lot to think about. Um, but obviously for me, my main priority at the time was trying to get a pro at Liverpool. So yeah, they then turned around to me and said, look, we're not letting you go anywhere. Yeah. We're going to offer you a two-year deal. So I remember like I remember that day like it was yesterday. So I went home. Yeah. And I was buzzing. living in digs at the time. I remember I cried. Like I went home. I was just buzzing. crying. Because thinking <laughs> like, yo, like. Dream. This yeah. year. Because this is what I've been working for for years. You right. know what I mean? Um, and then the good thing was, uh, once that happened, um, so I didn't sign my contract until June anyway. Yeah. But like we had a plan in place. Um, so the plan was for me to sign my pro contract and I was going to go out to uh, Royal Antwerp in Belgium for six months. All right. Okay. So is that, was that plan with Liverpool? With Liverpool. Yeah. All right, okay. So, um, the plan was, um, so obviously like, if you've not seen it, but in my first podcast, I talked about how I came up through all the the youth team and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, my youth team years are good. Um, the first year was decent, got the right opportunities, played in reserves when I was 16, all that kind yeah. of stuff. So I ended up signing my pro. Um, the academy director time was a guy called Frank McParland, like right. looked after me really well, good guy. You know, yeah. I can't, I don't have a bad word to say about him. You know what I mean? Looked after me well. And um, 
so at the time when I signed my pro, uh, what, sorry, when I was going to sign my pro, uh, he said, like, look, we're going to get you in a two-year pro and with how you are as a player, we want to get you first team experience as soon as possible. Right. You're not going to gain anything from playing in the reserves. <clears throat> um, and then I remember at the time, the guys from Royal Antwerp, so I think it was like one of the, I think it was like the first team manager and so it might have been like the sporting director or someone they, they was in Liverpool at the time. So they right. were looking around the facilities. And I remember sitting in a meeting, it was me, uh, our academy director from Poland at the time, and then the people from Royal Antwerp. So I remember I was speaking to them and I even told them that like, I could speak a little bit of French and this, that, the other. Yeah. So like going there would have been fine. I got family over there as well in Belgium. So like, wouldn't it have been a problem. So it was a great setup. Yeah. Great setup, yeah. yeah. And at the time, one of the reasons why we were trying to do it is because um, Man United had been doing that for years. Okay. Um, so United usually send all their players out to Antwerp. Right. Um, so if you look, I think you'll see over the last like 10 years, there's been a lot of players that have been sent out to play in Belgium um, right. from Man United. So Liverpool is trying to follow the same kind of, the same kind of, um, the same kind of platform. Yeah. There, should I say? So I was, so in my head I was thinking, I'm, okay, I'm going to sign this pro contract. I'm going to go out to Belgium for six months. And then when I come back from Belgium, the plan was to go to New York. To okay. New York Cosmos. Oh, right. And the same thing happened. They came down. I remember speaking with them and... Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the, the, so it was all there, like, set up for me. So I was meant to go to... So so, was, so, was their aim getting first team football, getting in adult football yeah. early? Yeah. So obviously for me, the way I seen that happening, it could have gone one or two ways. Like, so I'd have gone out uh, six months at Royal Antwerp in the Belgian first division. I think, was it, I can't remember if it was first, first or second division, but... I'd have, play, I'd have been playing a good standard. And then the second year, I'd have been playing in the, it wouldn't have been the MLS, it was in the, being the one below the MLS. Right. So New York Cosmos. But I remember like everything was sorted. I'd move out there, they'd get my own place. And nice. Started, like everything was sorted. So I knew what, what was in place. So that would have been my first year pro sorted. Um, depending on how well I did, I'd have probably come back to England and then been loaned that to maybe a League One. Right, or okay. If I did really well, then it'd be in the championship team or whatever. Um, so that was that was the plan. Um, Here's an interesting thought, mm -hmm. and I know this question's probably best suited for you know at the end once yeah, you yeah. sort of close mm -hmm. out and summarize. But yeah. just an interesting one to think yeah. of when you when you was given, um, you know, when they pulled you in and said, "Look, we got interest from yeah, the likes yeah. of these guys mm -hmm. and two year contracts." In hindsight, yeah. of what you've been through, yeah, yeah. Would you have went back and chose one of them? Other oh teams? yeah, hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. Without a question, hundred percent. Without a shadow of a doubt. Because, just because what, like, <clears throat> what I went through in that two years and even after was, yeah. I wouldn't wish it on on anyone. Yeah. And especially me, like when I was eighteen, nineteen, I was still a kid. You know what right. I mean? Um, and there was a lot of like dirty games played behind the scenes. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Um, but looking back on it, uh, so for example, let me put it into context. So I signed that deal in. 2012 right. on a pro contract that same year Leicester offered me free a deal wow so if I'd signed a free deal at Leicester, Leicester I'd have been there the year they won the Prem oh my goodness I think they won the Prem is it 2015 wasn't it I, think I, they won think, the prem. I can't remember I think it was two, if it was 2015 then I'd have been there been there the year that they won the Prem right Leeds at the time I think they was in I can't remember if they was in League 1 or the Championship wow so but imagine if you would have got a chance at a maybe a club. game or two at yeah, Leicester. Yeah, so that's period. what I mean. So with and with some of them, they were saying to me, look, you're going to be training with the first team, right? play reserves. So, you know what I mean? So I'd have, I'd have gone in there as a first team squad player, you know what right. I mean? So I'd have been training every single day. Like well, obviously at Liverpool at the time, I'd train here and there with the first team. I wasn't training with the first team every single day because okay. it was still, we started like a solid reserve squad. But with some of these smaller clubs, they, only, they might only have... 10 players in the reserves, eight players in the reserves, and then the reserve matches were made up of youth team and first team and some yeah. reserve players and stuff. Um, so... Yeah, it's changed a lot since, uh, yeah, since yeah. then, hasn't it? The setup it? is much I different mean, now. We're it, under it almost, and stuff. you know, you almost wish you were, the setup that they have now, you oh, almost yeah, yeah. wish it was there yeah, when yeah, we yeah. were, because mm -hmm. when we were there, it's like, you know, you, t you turn 16 after 16, yeah. two years, mm -hmm. if you're not ready for the first team, yeah. then it is what that was, it is. Yeah, so, you, so that was the thing. Go. So when I signed, <clears throat> this is 2012, so going back eight, almost nine years even. Um, so when I signed my my um, my scholarship, right? not my scholarship, so my pro, the plan was to send me out to Belgium for a year, yeah. come back, go to New York for a year, play in 
the American leagues and some yeah. things. The USL, it's called. Sorry. Right. Um, so that was the plan to get me ready for men's football and then come back and, yeah. and reevaluate again in yeah. the last year contract. Well, whereas the now time, they've got under 23s, yeah, they exactly. play under 23 leagues. Yeah. And then, don't they have a, like an under 23 Champions League as well? Yeah, don't think so. Is yeah, it like something a European like that. Something, yeah, so sort that of started like Ajax Barcelona. Yeah, so that started stuff. the year when we we turned pro. Yeah, um, but obviously, I never. I'll go into that in a minute. I never got to play in it for certain reasons. Um, but yeah, so that was the plan. Um, like I said, when we was younger, like once you turn eighteen, you've basically got to be ready for men's football. Uh, you like you'll get loaned out, or you're not gonna get the contract sort of thing. Um, and I think with my like physique and all that kind of stuff, yeah. the plan was there to get me out on loan. Um, uh, but yeah, so after a couple of after I signed my pro in June, a couple of weeks later, uh, Kenny Dalglish was the manager at the time, so he yeah. was the manager. Legend that gave me my pro, so a legend. Like he was amazing with me. He was the one that uh, gave me my reserve team debut when I was like sixteen. Oh, wow. he, was, he was the reserve manager. At yeah, I remember. Yeah. So like, so yeah, so Kenny Dalglish, I can't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Amazing guy and he's done amazing with me. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, even when we was in the youth team, he'd come over, watch some of our games, he'd pull me aside, give me advice. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? Obviously he was a striker himself. And at the time I was playing as a striker. Yeah. So getting advice from Kenny Dalglish is, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, like a player manager. Yeah. Like so like who, who else, players who manager. better would you ever as a striker get, yeah. get, get advice from? You know what I mean? So, so yeah, so that happened. And then Kenny Dalglish got sacked and then Brendan came in. Yeah. And then when Brendan came in, um, all the youth team coaches, reserve coaches, like, I think they, they left, got sacked, like half wow. of them got sacked. So there was just <coughs> an overhaul of people getting wow. sacked. So the guy, Frank McParland, who had originally set and, up. You know, not to interrupt, yeah. normally mm -hmm. they would keep like the youth team staff. It should do stuff. because it, it would keep the, st the, the stability of the club. Yeah, but, yeah. That I mean, year. it's normally the first team coaches yeah, and yeah. stuff that get replaced. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I know a lot of places where managers have come in and, you know, the the academy director, for example, stays the same. Yeah. Or, so it was just a complete... Yeah, yeah. So Brendan came in and tried to basically put his own touch onto the club, which right. I get, I understand why, but also at the same time, he was a young and new manager and it's a dangerous yeah. thing to do at a club like Liverpool. And um, so he came in, brought in his own like coaching staff, reserves, whatever, and he, he appointed certain people, um, basically certain people to to come in. And then at the time, I remember having the conversation with Frank McParland again, and he was basically saying to me that I, um, the Belgian move was off the table, the New York move was basically off the table, and we was having to look at things. And he said himself, he didn't know if whether he was going to be here long enough right. to see it through. Wow. And so then, would you say as soon as Brendan Rodgers came in, it yeah, sort yeah. of started taking a, a dip? Yeah, it did, to be fair. For me anyway, for other people, it, it, it was, they benefited from it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm only speaking from my experience. Right. Um, other people, like I said, I've got mates now who they will only speak highly of Brendan. Brendan himself was good with me. You right. know what I mean? It's just the system that he brought in. Right, okay. I didn't benefit from. Obviously, I'm a striker. Yeah. I'm six foot five. I'm not going to benefit from well, his style of football. That's, well, that's he what he, plays, that yeah. was his, that's what he said to me anyway. Yeah. That, um, that me playing in his system wouldn't benefit the team and things like this. So. That's interesting because they bought Andy Carroll, didn't they? Not, well, it wasn't Be Brendan that bought him. It was uh, yeah. Kenny Dalglish. Oh, it was good Dalglish, right? Yeah, but then that's the thing. So Andy Carroll went out on loan as well after a while. Right. Under Brendan, yeah, you know what I mean? He, I do remember um, that. So he left after, I think he played like a year or so, then he went yeah. to West Ham and things like that. So he didn't really last under Brendan either. Um, so, like I said, Andy Carroll, so, legend, like, yeah. you know what I mean? So, a good player. So, let's talk about deeper into your your personal experience yeah. in the day-to-day. Because, -day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we talked our, our, our fair. Yeah. So, you had situations where, you know, you'd come into training. Yeah. You'd basically be told, listen, you've not got hell in a chance. Yeah. So, you've not got a shot. But yes. But we're still going to use you for training yes. and stuff. So, so this comes tell in. Tell about that. Yeah. So, this comes in six months uh, into my contract so when um, when obviously I'm getting told the Belgian move's not on I get sent out on loan to Northampton within 24 hours mm. um, so it's not like I got a choice to say look you can do this can do that no you're going to Northampton we spoke to the manager Ada Boothroyd whatever like so I was like okay cool like I don't know much about the club I, and I'd heard of the manager at the time obviously he was with Watford and stuff like that so I've gone out yeah. on loan to Northampton I was a striker but then I've gone in as a left winger 
okay. um, in playing in League Two, where not much football was played. It's a lot of long balls and stuff. So, but gone in. Uh, Northampton, good club, really yeah. looked after me. Not Ada Boothride, really looked after me. I didn't, can't say a bad word about him. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had a great squad that year. Um, I was there for six months, but the squad ended up in the playoffs. Um, so we had the likes of Aki Fenwa, um, Clark Carlisle, Dave yeah. Lartel was now a manager for crew. Um, so we had a good, really good squad, good young players there at the time. Me, Kemar Roof, Lee Nichols, Louis Malt was now at Preston. Uh, Kemar Roof's at Rangers, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, MAUs, he was at uh, City at the time, yeah. and then at Ipswich. So we had a, a lot of good a young good players. Bunch of, yeah, good yeah players, so it yeah. was a good mix of like youth and experience. So I, I played, I think I played altogether about 14 games, 14 or 15 games, scored one, set up a few. Um, I played most of my games at the beginning and after that I was I was always in the squad you know what I mean right. um, I was on a bench coming off or whatever not, so I wasn't ever not in the squad so and I did for what for the opportunity I was given I did pretty well you know what I mean yeah um, so then after six months I've come back to Liverpool and then the guy who was our reserve manager is no longer our manager oh, he's left. and yeah so and you guys now our manager <coughs> a guy called Alex Inglethorpe yeah um, but m what I was getting from the club before that was that oh Alex is looking forward to seeing you Okay. is like heard good things about you da, 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 da. so yeah. like when you come back to the club like it's it's goal time basically yeah so they're play. basically saying you, oh you've got another chance here. yeah basically i'm thinking okay cool this is gonna be like my first year as a reserve player if not i'd already played a couple of games in the reserves this was gonna be like my actual like my first year pro as a reserve player so right, okay it'd be my year to like do my Shining, things sure. yeah do my thing sort of thing um as a liverpool reserves because at the time i think it just turned into under 21s okay. nowadays it's called under 23s and stuff so but yeah so it just turned into under 21s um so that's what i was told before i came back and then within three days of me being back at the club alex pulls me for a meeting like i hadn't spoke to him or whatever right. like, you know what i mean pulls me in and he's like um how did you find your loan i said yeah the loan was decent good good experience i'd I'd hopefully like to go back on loan next season again. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, because I want to play <clears throat> reserves for the remainder of that season. Right. He turns around to me and goes, um, yeah, we, we monitored you and and um, seen how you did. And you did pretty well. I do agree with you. Um, but obviously, now that you're back, you can see that things have changed at the club. Right. Um, and you're going to have limited opportunities uh, to play in the reserves. Okay. Uh, limited opportunities to train with the first team. Um, when he said about the limited opportunity to play with the reserves, that to me didn't make sense because this is my year as a first yeah, year yeah, pro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like this is if I'm not going to play in the reserve now, when am I going to play in the reserves? Yeah, when you are you I mean? ever going to play? Yeah. yeah, and he turned around to me after that. He said, um, "In 18 months' time, when they basically when your contract runs out, you won't be offered a new contract." This that's, was this was me and him in the in, a, <coughs> in his office. It's astonishing how yeah. they can determine that. Yeah. Unless they've bought like international players, they spent a bit of money, you know. Yeah, we what, had that. What, what was the but script with that? We, we've we, we've always had international players from, yeah. the, from the time I was under 15s. We've had international players, you know what I mean? Like yeah. Superstars and stuff. So, and that's part of Liverpool ID till this day. They've got yeah. international superstars, you know what I mean? Was so, there was there a big, in, so when you came back to the club, mm -hmm. was there a big influx of, you know, like 18, you, you reserve players, 19-year-old yeah, yeah, players young, they bought? Yeah, there was a lot of new young players that came in who I didn't know. Yeah. But they weren't in my squad. They were in the squad below, the year below, you know what right, I mean? Right, okay. So whether they was looking to push them up, I don't know, but... um. What he turned around to me and basically said was like, yeah, you're not going to get yeah. the opportunity. You're not going to... It seems really short-sighted yeah. to say that to someone when he's got 18 months left, left in his yeah. contract. And I'm only six months into my S new one. Six yeah. months into, mm -hmm. you know, to your, to your first year pro. Yeah. You know, you, you think, right, let's see how he gets on. Yeah, yeah exactly. Play so a full season. Yeah. But it's incredibly short-sighted unless there was an agenda somewhere yeah, yeah. So that's of what them bringing was. in some fresh players or whatever it mm -hmm. was it seems very short-sighted yeah, understandably when you're outside looking in yeah but go on tell me about the experience after that so yeah, after so, that conversation yeah, so after that conversation he turns around to me and said you're gonna get released so after around to him i said well if that's the case you may as well pay me off now yeah because i know that i've just come off a good loan 
Um, a lot of people now know who I am. Yeah. Obviously, you know that I'm a Liverpool player and I've been a Liverpool player since the age of 13, 14. Exactly. You've got enough stock now yeah. to go somewhere else. Exactly. So. And I knew that and I was in contact with certain clubs at the time uh, that had offered me the deals six months prior. So the Leicesters, the Leeds, yeah. Nottingham Forest. Um, so I was in, like, well, with the agent I had at the time, I was in contact. Um, but then he turned around to me and said, yeah, no, the club's not in the position right now to, to pay you off. That's interesting. Uh, which That's... to me didn't make sense. That's so interesting. Why, why would they not, why would they first of all tell you, listen, you're not going to get any chances, yeah. basically telling you you've not really got a future at the club. Yeah, I'm basically not To make, then yeah. deny you to go have a future somewhere else. Yeah. A club as big as Liverpool, yeah, you yeah. think, oh, there's just, you know, give him what he's owed from his contract yeah, and let him exactly. crack on with mm -hmm. his life. Yeah, because at the time, the money that I'd have been owed wouldn't have been, to the club anyway, it would have been, it wouldn't have been a lot. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. It would have been a smidge. But to me, if at the time, when I got back from Northampton and the, they gave me that money, that would have been life-changing money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also it'd have been life-changing money, but I'd also then be able to go somewhere else. Yeah. With no hard feelings. I'd have been like, thank Enjoy you. Enjoy your football. Yeah, you thank know. you for the experience. I'm grateful for it. Yeah. It didn't work <clears> out and that's that's okay. You know what I mean? Sometimes these things don't work out. Um, And I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought, any any type of way yeah uh so for me it's not that i didn't make it that was never my problem you know what i mean i knew that the chances of me making it in liverpool's first team were slim, slim or next to none you know what i mean yeah, because you hardly given a chance yeah though. so in, and it was even that is how they went about it yeah which like then led me down a certain path you know what i mean right um so yeah so when that happened the rest of that season i just trained right didn't play one reserve game I had to train with the reserves and then sometimes even started making me train with the youth team. Um, at some point, at one point I remember like I trained, literally trained, like it was like three bounce, three, it was almost like three weeks on a bounce without a day off. So one day I'd be like training with the youth team, next to with the first team, then with the reserves. And it was, it was almost like I was just, I was, <laughs> I was like a lab rat, you know what I mean? Like I was yeah. just training all the time. Um, so that, that that went on. Um, I'm not getting my, my, my chance. Players and I are starting to ask me what's going on. And, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, what was that for you mentally? Because, uh, you know, a lot of the things that we're trying to do in this podcast is to just relate with people mm -hmm. who might have gone through the same experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How does that affect your mental? Like, you know, we spoke about it offline. Yeah, yeah. What were you going through when you were just messed about like that? Mentally, it was difficult because I had no one to speak to about it. You know what I mean? I never spoke to my friends about it. I didn't speak to family about it. I yeah. didn't know what to do. You know what I mean? I wasn't trained on it. I was 18. Like, in my head, I'm like, is this normal? Do I speak? Because a lot of it is like, when you treat it that way, it hurts your feelings. Yeah, you know what I mean? So obviously, as an 18-year-old boy, basically, you don't know how to address the, those kind of situations. Yeah. I didn't know whether to confront my manager. I didn't know whether to, I didn't know who to speak to, yeah. so to speak. And I didn't know how to bring it to them either that look, what's happening is wrong. You know what I mean? Like you're telling me one thing, but then you behave in a certain way. Like if you're telling me that I'm not gonna get a contract at the end of the year, yeah. when they just pay me off now and release me. Yeah. Liverpool's a massive club. And, and so. so people could understand your support structure. Yeah. So for you, you didn't have an agent when all this was going yeah, on. So, did, yeah, so that you... when that happened, when I got back from Northampton, the agent that I had at the time was a big agent. He had a couple of big players and stuff. Yeah. So when I told him just that, look, the club was saying X, Y, Z. Literally, from, it's almost like from that day on, the agent basically like cut me off. Wow. He never came in to speak with the club. Wow. Um, even with my pro contract, I negotiated my own pro contract. Oh my um, God. So, so agent, as soon as he heard that, he yeah, just hightailed yeah. it. Because at the time, I remember like even when when I was with um, with Frank McParlin, he basically kind of like advised me against agents to an extent, right? Because they were basically I'd only been with them for a certain amount of months, and they were they would have took if they negotiated my contract, they would have took a big, big, big like chunk 20%, of money. Twenty percent, twenty five percent, ridiculous. They'd have right. took a big chunk of money, and then with what Frank advised me, he's like, look, just we're not going to do you dirty just negotiate your own contract. Obviously, if I had an agent do it, I'd have probably got more money. Right. Don't get me wrong, I'd have probably got a lot more money, but Yeah, he would have got, still, you know, he would have put clauses yeah. in place. He would have mm -hmm. looked after your best interest. Yeah. And but that was the thing, I had clauses in place anyway. Right. But then after a while, 
when these people came in, um, they basically like were trying to give me reasons as to why these clauses weren't in play or and certain things basically. So even afterwards, I, I found out that I had clauses in my contract about how long I could play or I, I had to get a certain amount of games and all these kind of things, which right. weren't made clear to me at the time until afterwards. Um, so yeah, so when that happened with the agents, they kind of just dropped me out. So in terms of support system, I really had no one. Right. Um, my family didn't really know to, to obviously I had an older brother, Vinny, who played at the time, yeah. but he was going for his own things with his club at the time. So um, I couldn't really call him and be like, this is yeah. happening because I knew what he was going through. Um, but uh, in terms of support, I really- no, Didn't have any support. So nothing, but, zero, yeah. no, it begs the question of, did they know that? And did they sort of take advantage of that slightly? Now you'll never know because yeah, yeah. until you're told by yeah, yeah. someone who was at that time, yeah. who were controlling players' con contracts, mm -hmm. who had mm -hmm. a visual of it, yeah, yeah. you'd never know. But it does beg the question of, did they see a, an opportunity in mm -hmm. you yeah. to, basically do what they want. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You know, we'll, we'll tell this kid he's not got a chance, but we'll use him to train or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. we'll just keep him there. And then if he, you know, if he does come into any fruition and we'll maybe pull it back. Yeah. So, you know, it does beg the question and mm -hmm. you know, you'll have a lot of people, well, it feels like they knew exactly what they were doing. Yeah, yeah. Because of your support network, mm -hmm. they, they feel like they couldn't talk to an agent. Yeah, yeah. They were dealing directly with you. Yeah. Who's, an 18 year old, 17 yeah, year yeah. old kid. Yeah, so they so can tell me what they want, yeah. It's it's um, it's um an interesting thought mm -hmm. because- And it, it's funny you said that because at the time, the guy, Alex Singlethorpe at the time, he, he knew who my agent was. He right. dealt with him because my agent at the time had a couple of players at Tottenham, Harry Kane's and a couple of other people. Uh, so it was, it was weird because even though he's telling me all these things and he's grilling me, he's then turning around to me saying, tell your agent to come and speak to us right. and instead of worrying about Harry Kane's contract and da 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 da. Cause obviously at the time, right. Harry Kane was starting to make it in Tottenham. Right, okay. and, obviously my, and obviously at the time, Alex knew that <coughs> we had the same agent. Um, so he'd say these things to me as in, as in to say like, if the agent came, they'd be able to re resolve the situation. But I'm telling them, look, I'm in this contract with this agent. Um, at the moment, we don't have a good relationship. You can deal with me directly. You know what I mean? I want a payoff. I know right. how much I'm old. Um, why don't I just get paid off? Right. Every time it's just like, no, the club's not in a situation to pay off. Get it basically was trying to he was trying to tell me to get my agent to basically get another club to buy me. So instead of the club paying me off, they'd make money off me. You know yeah. what I mean? So it was almost like it was it was trying to basically play me in a way. But I'm like, well, I'm in this situation because of you, not anyone else in the right. club. It's, him yeah, directly who's, who's you yeah, told me yeah yeah so he's the one who's got a problem with me which i don't know why um so i'm in this predicament because of him but then he's telling me to tell my agent to come and speak to them about someone else buying me or me being sold on and things yeah. like this which to me didn't make sense um so yeah so, so for the rest of that season i didn't um i didn't um didn't i didn't play so just training and then the new season comes i didn't go on holiday didn't do nothing that pre-season just worked my socks off. And I came back pre-season thinking, I'm gonna prove this guy wrong. I'm gonna show him that I'm good enough to play in the reserves. Does that the other, right. I'm running my socks off in in, in pre-season. I'm just doing the most. And yeah. then next minute he's just telling me the same thing. Um, there was a pre-season tour with the first team. Half of my reserve team went home, more or less like 90%. And then a couple of youth team players went as well. So right. there's youth team players that have gone above me. Um, and that really affected me that year because I was mad thinking like, what's going on sort of thing. You know what I mean? I'm not getting my opportunities. And then uh, not letting you travel. And that's, exactly. and, you know, so people can understand that's a big thing mm -hmm. that traveling, mm -hmm. um, you know, in pre-season mm -hmm. with the first team yeah, or yeah. whatever mm -hmm. is huge. Yeah. Cause then, you know, there's some people, some footballers, Jesse Lingard yeah, made yeah. a, you mm -hmm. know, Danny Welbeck yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. made careers from traveling with yeah, the first yeah, team exactly. pre-season, mm -hmm. smashing it in mm -hmm. that pre-season. Yeah tour mm -hmm. that they do yeah and then getting a look in for yeah. the first team and it is so important yeah and even even it's even good for if you don't want a player take him away get him a couple of games in preseason and then yeah, sell him yeah. someone else will buy him off that yeah. off the back of that so when 
they didn't want me. In my head, I was thinking, why don't you just do that? Raise up my stock and then sell me. Yeah. But obviously, he didn't want to give me the opportunity to to showcase what I can do or whatever not. Yeah. Um. So I end up... Because um, they didn't want to be at a loss. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the club didn't want to be at a loss to say, yeah, fair enough, we'll pay you off. You uh-huh. go do what you do. Yeah, yeah. And then two years later, they see you sign for yeah. a decent club mm-hmm. for a couple of millions. They're going to be pretty pissed off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, someone's head's going to roll because yeah. they're going to be like, why did they... Yeah, Lame it, that happened with a couple of players that was a couple of years above you. I'm not going to say like names and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. it happened the previous years where the club was offered to play a new contract. He said no, signed somewhere else on a free, and then next minute is flying, and then yeah. the club have lost millions. Yeah, um, so that does happen, and you, you are correct in that. Uh, so then that preseason comes, he's telling me all this, and then I've ended up going to train with Rochdale uh, under Keith Hill. So I was training I think for like a week or two. Uh, there was in League Two at the time. There was fighting for, for promotion. So I've gone there, trained, trained really well. I'm thinking, yeah, cool. Like I'm gonna go to Rochdale on loan. Right. Spoke with the manager after two weeks. Like, yeah, go back to Liverpool. Um, this was on a Friday. He's like, okay, cool. Go back. We'll get contracts sent over the weekend. We'll sign them. They'll sign them, and you, you'll basically come here with us for the whole season. Because yeah. we're looking to obviously we'll take you for the season, and if you do well, we'll sign you. For only two years after your contract's up at Liverpool. So yeah. that was the deal that I thought was going to happen that weekend. So I'm gassed thinking, okay, cool. I can go home. I can right. live back at my mum's. Got a support system. Like everything w- w- would be much better. And then I can just forget about Liverpool and my time there. Uh, because that that first year was, was really toxic. Yeah, it was not the best time. Um, so I'm thinking, okay, cool. <clears throat> like I remember like just being happy all that weekend, thinking I'm, I'm going to leave Liverpool. Could be away for the whole season. Go to Rochdale. And... Uh, I remember on the Sunday, I get a phone call um, from our player liaison and he was like, yeah, the Rochdale move is not happening. Instead, you're going to Partick Thistle. Okay. Then, well, why did they give you a reason? They didn't give me a reason. They just said the club's, the club's not, um, the club's not. Uh, basically, they think it'll be better for you to go up to Scotland. So wow. for me, obviously at the time, no disrespect to Partick, but I didn't, I didn't really watch too much Scottish football. Yeah. So I didn't know who Partick Thistle were. So yeah. I remember saying to, to the guy like, who's that? He said, oh no, they're a team that, they just got promoted from uh, the Scottish champ to the Scottish prem. So I'm like, okay, okay. like that sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I remember one of the first things I did was call my friend, Michael Ingu. Uh, he'd been on loan to Hearts the year before. Yeah. So I remember I called him that evening. He was like, oh, what are you saying? I'm like, oh, like I'm going on loan to Scotland tomorrow. What's it like? Yeah. And then he'd done really well at Hearts. Um, obviously, I think they, they got to the final of like the Scottish <coughs> FA Cup and things like yeah. that. Um, so he said to me, look, if you go there, obviously you're fit at the moment. You just, we're still in pre-season. If you go there and you do what you normally do, you'll absolutely fly in that league. Right. Um, so obviously he's giving me words of, encour- words of encouragement and whatnot. So I'm thinking, okay, cool. Like this is, even though it's not what I wanted, uh, right. I didn't have a choice. Basically, like when they called me, they basically said, you're going to Partick, not yeah. Partick want you or this, that, the other. They just basically said, you're, you're going. That's where you're going, yeah. yeah. So obviously I knew I had no choice, but so I've, obviously I've called around. Um, find out a little bit about the club. Obviously, did my Google searches that day and find out what was happening. Um, and then after that, um, so I've obviously gone to party the next day. Um, got there, and I like got to the club. There's paparazzi there, media, all this kind of thing. So I'm thinking like, whoa, you know nice. what I mean? Like, um, so I remember like being in the newspapers and all these kind yeah. of things. Yeah. So like, which to me was bizarre. So I, but I thought, okay, cool. If that's happening, because when I went to Northampton, it was really. Uh, it was low key. Low you know key, I mean? yeah. So yeah when I, just I remember sorry. when I arrived to Northampton, it was only the club photographer there. It was all low key, signed yeah, everything, yeah. took me around the club, taking my pictures, and it was announced properly. Yeah. Whilst with the Partick one, it was like people kind of knew before and it was speculated today. Yeah, because you're, you know, the the whole pedigree of being at Liverpool, yeah, yeah, being so, a pro yeah. at Liverpool, mm-hmm. and then yeah, so coming but, to a team that's just been yeah. So by the time I got there, there was promoted. already paparazzi there waiting and all this kind of things. So I was thinking like, whoa, like this is big, you know what I mean? Yeah. So in my head, I've got it like, okay, cool. I'm here for six months, but in this six months, I'm gonna do a madness, try and extend my loan for another six months. Yeah, yeah. Keep, if I can keep us in the in the in the Scottish Prem, then you're laughing. I'm laughing. You yeah. know what I mean? That's that's me. How so, how did you find just Scotland in general, just I Scottish lo- football? Um, Scottish football was <coughs> good. Like I I didn't. Training with the with with the club at the time, obviously I was, I was with their first team in the Scottish Prem. I didn't struggle. Yeah, didn't find it difficult fitness wise. Didn't yeah. find it difficult playing. Yeah, um, it was just weird because when I got there preseason, the manager's promising me this, that, that, the other, promising right. me the world. Um, he's brought me in. He said, "Oh, you can play in the left and the right, in the middle, yeah. 
we'll, we'll be able to utilise you in all the positions. So I'm like, okay, cool. Played pre-season on the left wing, mainly didn't get to play as a striker. Set up a couple of goals here and there. Um, and the season started and that right. year, if I remember correctly, remember when BT Sport first came about? Yeah. Um, so if I, I'm sure that our <coughs> game was live on BT Sport on a Friday. Right. So I've just done a decent preseason. I'm thinking I'm one of the better attacking players in the club. I'm young. I'm 19, 19 at the time. I'm thinking, you know, like I'm, I should, I'm, I'm in, in with a good chance to start. And we're live on BT Sport. Yeah. All my friends are hitting me up saying, yeah, like we're going to be watching. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, we're live on BT Sport, I'm gassed. All my teammates back at Liverpool are hitting me up. Um, I remember I, I, I booked a, a train a ticket for my mum, my brothers, my little sisters. So it was like my whole family brought them up, right. put them all up in a hotel thinking, yo, like they're going to finally get to see me play a professional game awesome. like on TV, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I've done all that thinking, like I was adamant I was starting and yeah, yeah. The, what I was getting from the manager yeah. is that I'd be starting, you know what I mean? And then next minute the game comes, he names the team and I'm on the bench. Right. It was a bit of a kick in the teeth, but I was thinking, okay, cool. You know what? Let's yeah, stay you, humble. You might come on, yeah. I'm 19. Like it's it's a big thing, you know what I mean? Maybe because of the TVs or whatever, you know what I mean? Just don't look too much into it. And was playing Dundee United that day. So I remember- Dundee, um, that's my old yeah, team. Yeah. Club, yeah, so I was playing Dundee United. Yeah. And um, so at the time I thought to myself, you know what, okay, let me um, let me not let it get to me, but right. you might come on and you'll have yeah, yeah. a big part to yeah, play. Yeah, of so course, yeah. At that point, I'm not stressed or anything like that. So I'm like, calm. But anyway, game finished nil-nil. I didn't end up coming on. Yeah. But I remember one of my friends watching and he said something like, yeah, they spoke about you beforehand. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? They, they kind of made it out as if online as well, that, that he was playing, you know what I mean? Right, okay. Um, so yeah, that happened, but anyway, so I was like, cool, whatever. And then the manager's like, uh, spoke to me after, like, yeah, yeah, don't worry. There's plenty more opportunities to come. Right. And then next time we had a game pre uh, midweek, it was a cup game against a team that I'd already played, I'd already played against in preseason. So it might have thinking, I already played against them. I think I scored against them and set up one in preseason. So I'm thinking, look. Great chance. Great chance. Give me the chance to start. Yeah. Same thing happens. I'm on the bench. Nothing Just happened. Didn't play yeah. Came on, I think it was like in, I think if I, if, I remember, if I came on, I think it was extra time or just before extra time, whatever. Came on the last 10, 15 minutes. When I came on, we ended up scoring. Um, but the same thing happened when I, we left. It was an like evening game. There's paparazzi there, like, oh, how do you feel about your first game? Da, 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 da. So I'm like, okay, cool, like, it's good. Just the whole commotion. And yeah, stuff, commotion. Yeah. It was a lot of it. And that, that played a big part into like me being down after, you know, because right. of like raising you up, sort of thing. And then after that, I remember this is when it, like, it, it really, really kicked in. Um, so we'd played Dundee on the Friday. I didn't play. Played on a Wednesday against, I think it was Cowden Beef. I came on and then on the Friday after that, we've, we've uh, traveled up to Ross County. Right. Uh, so if you know like Ross County is like top of Scotland, no, no. past yeah. Dundee, like it's, we had to travel the day before. Yeah. Um, so we traveled the day before, I'm training really well, I'm fit, I'm sharp. And then from what I'm, <coughs> I'm getting from the manager, I'm thinking maybe now is the chance that I'm gonna get at least half a game yeah. or even start, which is what I felt like I deserved at the time. And then we've traveled there on a Friday, didn't say nothing to me. On the Saturday in the morning, didn't say nothing to me. We used to do like our um, right. tactics and all that kind of talks and stuff like that. And look, looking at how the other team plays, we'd do that in the morning. Yeah. Um, didn't say nothing to me. And then we get to the stadium, um, got there like half, half 12, one-ish. And we're all, we're all looking around and stuff. And just before we, he says to everyone, oh yeah, let's go back in. I'm gonna name the starting 11 and then um, just before that happens, it pulls it pulls me aside. It's like, oh, right. I'm not let me speak to you. So when he said that, I'm, think, I'm thinking, that's me starting. You know what I mean? Right, probably okay. going to tell me like, look, I'm starting you today. Yeah. This is what I want you to do. This is what I expect from you or whatever. Not you know what I'm thinking. That's you know what I mean. This is what I deserve, sort of thing. And um, next minute, so he pulls me aside and he said to me, oh, like, how do you think you did on um, on the Wednesday against Cardiff right. Beath? I said, you know what? I only got five, ten minutes, whatever it was, but I think I did all right with the opportunity given to me. Obviously I'd like to play more um, and and obviously just show you and the fans what I can do because right. obviously I've got big there's expectations of me here right, at this right, club. Right. You know what I mean? I've been brought here on loan. I didn't choose to come here. You know what I mean? 
Right. I've told I'm told obviously that like, you guys have brought me in, so the expect the expectations are there for me to perform. So obviously yeah, I'm just waiting for for the opportunity. And it's like yeah yeah I understand and I agree with you. This uh, so but today we're just trying something different. And so you're not in the squad. So, <laughs> That's yeah. <laughs> so when he said that to me, I'm like wait like I'm not in and bearing in mind when I was at Northampton, yeah, I was never not in the squad. You know what I mean? So. I'd, if I didn't start, I'd be on the bench, right. and come off the bench. Or even if I didn't come off the bench, I'd always be in the squad, I'd always be involved. Um, and bearing in mind, we had a big squad at Northampton as well, like a big, big squad. Yeah. While at Partick, was the squad involved, wasn't, yeah. yeah, but the squad wasn't massive at Partick, it was a small squad, uh, which, like, it was just weird. Um, so then That's interesting. I mean, he should have been up front with you straight away. Yeah, yeah. Um, he should have just given you a sense of direction of yeah. if you're going to play or not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's weird because my experience at Dundee was the best experience I had in football. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I thought all Scottish, you know, teams sort of had that kind of mentality and ethos where they just tell you up front. Mm. Do you know what? I, th I feel like they do, to be fair, because like I said, there was a lot of good people at the club at Partick, which I'll get onto in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Um, because... Uh, <coughs> Like I'm not gonna say whose name, but there was someone in the coaching staff who ended up helping me to find out what was really going on. Yeah. Um. So from then on, like so, like I said, a lot of Scottish people are very honest and they are very upfront. Yeah, front. very upfront. Yeah. Um, obviously, with the manager in this situation, it's just that he was getting pressured from above him, which right. I didn't know at the time. Um. So obviously, after that, um, I think that game we lost as well. Um, to Ross County away. And after that, we were just struggling. We was getting battered certain games. I remember we played Dundee away again and we got battered 5-0. I remember wow. I was in the stands. We played um, Aberdeen as well, up north. Just got miles of pressure yeah. So, yeah. but these times I, I'm just not involved. And it's like, and I remember I was going to the manager and I'm like, look, why am I not playing? Why, like, why am I not involved? I'm doing better than this guy in training. Yeah, yeah. You've gave him 10 games in a row and he's not scored one goal. You've <clears> gave him... 10, another 10 games, he's not set up yeah. a goal. What difference would it make if you put me instead of him? You know what I mean? I'm yeah. not getting the opportunity and I've been brought here. You know what I mean? It's not like I came here off my own back. And then he just kept turning around to me and said, yeah, just wait your turn and you'll get your chance. And just, I said, well, I'm only here for six months. Yeah. And then um, after that, I've, see, I've started to, I've called Liverpool. So I'm like, look, I'm not getting my chance here. I want to come back. Right, okay. Um, this was Alex, uh, the guy who was obviously our manager at the time. So I've um, I've basically called him. I remember uh, messaging him saying, look, I'm not getting the chance here. The manager's telling me one thing, but what he's telling yeah, me and what that. I'm seeing is like, I'm basically wasting my time. And then instead of him to be like, okay, cool, we understand, come back. He's turned around to me and said, well, you're not, you, you, you can hear, you're going to be in no better position by coming back here because you know you're not going to play here. So you may as well stay, stay up north on loan. I said, right, yeah, okay. but I'm signed to Liverpool. You know what I mean? Like, So their whole attitude, I mean, their whole attitude was, at the start was they, they're more or less washing their hands off you. Yeah, they? basically that's what it was like. So it's almost like, well, you're there now. See out your contract. If you come back, you're basically going to get, going to get punished. You're going to get fined or what, suspended that's or whatever. So, because um, so, I was saying to him, I said, look, I, I, I'm very close to just coming back because I'm training really well. I'm one of the better players in the team. Like, what's going on? Um, and then, yeah, so he just basically said, yeah, if you come back, you're basically going to get... Same treatment, just you're gonna nothing. Worse, yeah, because you're going to get suspended, so you're going to be losing out on money oh, wow. and things like that. So, obviously, the only thing I had at the time was that the fact that I was getting paid, you know what I mean? Because I'm just training, I'm not playing. So I'm like, okay, cool, I don't want to lose my money now, you know what I mean? Um, because I had things to pay for, so um, so yeah, that's happened, and then it comes to a point where I was injured, so I was out for like two or three weeks, right, with my shin, and then I I got to speaking to one of the coaching staff or whatnot, and then he said to me, he's like, oh, why aren't you playing? So when he asked me that, I was in my head, I was thinking that's a bit of a weird question to ask, you know what I mean? Because you're yeah, part, you're of, the part of the coaching staff, staff so yeah. you should know why. And then I said, look, do you know what? I'd love to find out myself why why this is happening. Um, so he said, look. Give me like two or three days. I'm going to speak with a couple of people, whether it's the manager or whatever, um, and find out why you're not getting your opportunity. And this, and this person was really good with me, to be fair. Right. A couple of days later, he comes to me, said, come and speak to me. He said, um, one of the reasons you're not playing is because basically the manager's getting pressured from the chairman. So basically he told him not to play here because the chairman is doing someone from Liverpool a favour by having you up here. 
Wow. So <laughs> when they said that to me, oh, I'm, wow. I've like lost my head. Because he said, yeah, so the chairman is basically either friends or knows someone, they've got a good relationship with someone at Liverpool. And that's the reason why Hanok is up here. Because originally the manager didn't even know that I was coming up. Oh, And the chairman just goodness. told him this kid from Liverpool's coming up. Just treat him well and stuff, but make sure he doesn't play. Oh, um, wow. Because the, the other thing was... Um, wow. Do you Partick, think Partick, so Partick wasn't paying anything for me being on loan. You know what I mean? So Liverpool was just paying your wage? Yeah. Well, usually. So, so do you think they were trying to fulfill? Oh, here's an interesting thing. Do you think Liverpool were just trying to fulfill their maybe a clause in the contract to just get you getting Pro games? Probably, or, yeah. What, what, what was it? Yeah, so I that, mean, I don't know yeah, the so ins and thing. outs of your contracts. Yeah, so that's but, the thing that when I, like I said, when it come, came to contracts and stuff, there was a clause in my gate in my contract about playing games, um, but. In the first year, I feel, I feel like I'd fulfilled it by being out on loan to Northampton. Right. You know what I mean? So I think it was like a minimum of 10 games this season or something. Right. Uh, but then there's also a clause in it that if I'm out on loan and I don't play or something like that, then that doesn't affect Liverpool, if that makes sense. Yeah. Some, something stupid around them. Right? It, all of this sounds very vindictive. Yeah. It's, it sounds very like you spend all that time you know, speaking to the chairman, getting him, pulling in the favour yeah. to get you to over mm -hmm. to Scotland. Why not just let yeah. you go do that your thing? That was the thing. The chairman himself was an ex-player. He was an ex-pro at the club at Partick. So he was a legend at the club. And every time he'd see me, he'd smile in my face and all these kind of things. And I thought it was cool, you know what I mean? And yeah. I thought it was the manager that was giving me a bit of a hard time. But looking back on it now, um, the manager was like, I could tell that he felt sorry for me. You know what I mean? Right. Even the assistant, because then when it came to like, playing games in the reserves, they just always be like, yeah, go and play in the reserves because just to keep you fit and then, yeah. but yeah, even though I'd play well or score in reserve games, I still wouldn't play first team. First team, but then there'd be players in reserve games that <clears throat> uh, players in the reserve team that were like my age, wouldn't be too, wouldn't be amazing, but they might have a decent game here or there in a different position. And then they'd get opportunities in the first team. But for me, I wasn't, you know what I mean? It wasn't happening. Um, so when that was happening, um, yeah, so like I said, I called Liverpool. And, and, and you didn't have any idea of this whatsoever? At the time, no. And then he basically said to me, like, basically someone at Liverpool is basically pulling these strings for you not to play. Uh, so at that point, I just lost my head because I knew I'm not going to play at party. Yeah. So. Did you have an idea who it might have been? Yeah, Liverpool? I knew exactly who it was straight away. Oh, right, 100%. So you knew. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Because do you want to like, name? Is, it, is he even, still at yeah, Liverpool? Yeah, Alex Singlethorpe still at Liverpool. So yeah. it's not, it's not, I didn't have and I didn't have a problem with anyone else at the club bar him. Bar him. Or let's say he not, not even I did I didn't have the problem, it was him with the problem. Yeah. Which till this day I don't know. You know what I mean? Why um it, it's so much for me, it sounds like a lot of effort to do that to a player. Yeah. Than to just say Le let me go. Yeah, that let was you go. My thing, yeah. Pay you what you're worth mm -hmm. in your contract mm -hmm. and then let you go do your thing yeah. somewhere else. That seems a lot more effort but, than yeah. just because mm -hmm. the club can afford it. 100%. They're a big club, yeah. you know, so what? If you go to another team and you blow up yourself a million, that's just the way yeah. life is. Uh, I wouldn't be the first player to do that. Yeah. But then I could go to another team and flop. Yeah, so yeah. They it, wouldn't even let me have the opportunity to go to another team right. and perform, you know what I mean? So it just seems like a lot of effort. Yeah. It seems vindictive. Mm -hmm. It seems evil a yeah. little bit. And then uh, at, manipulative. First, at first I thought it was just happening to me. But later I got to find out that it was happening to, to, a, few players. to a few other players, you know what I mean? Um because the, the, the same sort of pattern. And I remember one of the players that was happening to his agent told me, um, which I'll get onto in a minute. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I got to find that out. So afterwards, I just lost my head. My head was gone. So I started going out. I started drinking. These times I never really used to drink like that. You know right. what I mean? But because I knew that no matter what I do, yeah. I'm not going to play. So in my head, I just, my head just completely <clears throat> went. Do you think it, it almost feels like, did they just want you to quit? Because then... They wouldn't be at a loss out of yeah, contract. Yeah, yeah, I think I feel like which in the end I basically kind of did to an extent. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So like I said, I was just going out, this that the other, and then in the end, um, I, I was in the last month of the of the six month deal, and then what happened is what really kind of like like pissed me off. Basically, they've basically my contract ends in January, and in December they decide to send a representative up from Liverpool to come up to Scotland and speak to me, and then turn around to me and said, "Oh yeah." 
the club are now in a position and they're now ready to pay you off. Right. While the year before that, I'd asked for a payoff and they said, no, the club's not in a position to pay you off or they're not ready right. and things like that. But now all of a sudden, because I've gone out to Scotland and I've not played and my market value is really down yeah, they... and I look bad, now you want to pay me off because you know that no one's going to want to touch me sort of thing. Oh, um, so that's happened. Uh, if I'd left then at that time, I'd have been, the kid was just left Bartik to somebody not played and no one's going to want to touch me in that January. Um, so yeah, so that's happened. And then so the, the guys come down, come up and spoke. I'm not going to say who because I've still got yeah, a good yeah. relationship with Yeah, the, he's, just, he's just a messenger, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, so he was so. basically doing what he was told by the club. So, yeah. um, but he's come up and said to me, like, look, Liverpool are ready to pay you off this amount or whatever not and it was quite cheeky because the first amount they offered was less than what the contract were worth at the time right um so it well, was that because it's just the last few few months of your contract you yeah they just that? they just threw a random number at it basically <clears throat> um so at the time i was just like nah and i start now i started being hard-headed because right. now i'm like okay no you don't get to treat me this way you don't get to send me up on because i knew what was happening right, right. so I'm, I'm like you don't but FC at the time because i'm still young i didn't want to confront the manager say, look, I know yeah. that you've set me up. It's difficult to you when you, you know, when you've not got someone there to yeah. sort of speak for mm -hmm. you and sort of, you know, have your best interest. Yeah, yeah. They can literally just do what they want. Yeah, exactly. That's they, what happened, yeah. They can try and violate you mm -hmm. because they know I'm just dealing with an 18 year old kid. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of things are not checked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At a all. lot of things are not checked. Which that, they that, need to be, they need to be regulated yeah. a lot more. Um, yeah, so that happened. So now I'm being hard headed. I'm like, look, you don't get to basically bully me, send me, send me up north to Scotland on my own and make sure that I don't play for me to then come back and you're not to just decide you want to pay me yeah. any amount of money to get rid of me. So after <clears> that, I'm <throat> like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not taking yeah. the payoff. And how many months did you have left? Six months. Six months. Uh, yeah, so. I yeah, two right. And you know what? <clears throat> any reasonable person mm -hmm. who found out that was happening yeah, yeah. would actually in spite be like, no, mm -hmm. I'm going to stay. Mm -hmm. And just keep getting paid. Yeah, and just do because nothing. at that time as well, I didn't, um, I didn't uh, have any contacts. You right. know what I mean. So I thought to myself, I'm gonna stick, stay in these six months and build up my contacts. So I, when I leave as a free agent, and hopefully when I leave as a free agent, they'll um, they'll put a clause in that no club will owe them money because that was one of the reasons why. I ended up having signed my pro in the first place because they turned around to like Leicester and, and Leeds and said if they, if they want me they'd have to pay 250 grand right, okay. because of like academy development <clears throat> or whatever yeah. the, 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 the term is. Um, so yeah, so I said, no, I'm not doing it. And after that, he started making me just train with the youth team all the time, like consistently. Yeah. So I'm coming in. So now that it's mental warfare yeah, and they're trying mental to break warfare, it. Yeah. So now I'm just training with the, with the youth team as, and I think at the time I just turned 20 as a 20 year old, I'm, bigger than half of the players in the reserves, yeah. never mind the youth team. And now I feel like I'm just training with kids. You know what yeah, I mean? Like they, 16 I've seen it happen. Stuff. They did yeah. it with players at Norwich. When yeah. I was at Norwich, mm -hmm. first team players, yeah. grown men. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that happened. Um, so I feel like I'm just training with, like I said, training with kids every single day. Uh, they just basically just mentally bullying me. You know what I mean? Every single day, I hate, like I hated. I remember like, I'd speak to my house parents and they'd just be like, I remember like speaking to them like a while back and they were saying like, look, that time was really dark because you can just tell like I just hated going into into training. Um, but in the end, I built up, built up a couple of contacts. And then also on top of that, the, just the mental torture got, became too yeah, much. Too much um, so in the end, I ended up taking like a certain figure to get paid off. Um, so when they paid me off, um, I've left the club. But then I had my contacts for when, I think I left the club with like three months to go. Yeah. Uh, so I think I left in like April times. Um, so I've, I've built up a certain amount of contacts to say, look, okay, cool. When the season starts again in, in July, I'm going to come down with its training or trial. Some clubs offered me deals. So Sheffield United, I got back in contact with them and said, look, I was there when I was younger. I'd originally signed this contract, but obviously I signed for Liverpool with my parents moved. Yeah. I said, okay, cool. We know who you are. We've been monitoring you for a while when you was at Barnsley and stuff like that. Uh, on, on your youth loan, we, we inquired about you. We wanted to offer you a deal like two years ago. Right, okay. So then they turned around to me and said, okay, cool. Come back and train for two weeks. And if you do well, we'll offer you a two year deal. Right, okay. That's, that was the verbal agreement I had with them. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so come back and basically, you're gonna have basically this contract on the table for you to sign. Um, and then the other club was uh, Leighton Orient under Russell Slade. I'd right. spoke with them. 
And the other club was Swindon. I'll get onto the Swindon one in a bit. But yeah, so I had like two, three, four clubs um, ready there to go. Um, so the first one actually, sorry, no, I just remembered one was Berry. So I wanted to stay yeah. in Manchester at first. So Berry under Kevin Blackwell. So at the time, so I've left Liverpool now. I'm thinking everything, I could forget about it all, uh, whatever not. And then I go into Berry. Um, so obviously, when they've brought me in, they must have sports in Liverpool. Because the first day I get there, Kevin Blackwell, uh, I'm in the corridor, like at, at the right. training ground. Uh, the, sorry, at the stadium, because we used to get changed at the stadium and yeah. go to the training ground. Kevin Blackwell comes out of his office and he just shouts down the, down the corridor, McKendy, get in my office now. Like that. To, so what, shouts day at, one? Day, bro, day one. I've never met him or nothing. Just shouts down the corridor, McKendy, get in my office now. So I'm thinking, right. So like, is Blackwell the first team manager? First team manager. Right, okay, interesting. So yeah, so I've got to bury is, Isn't time. he that one of the one that spoke to you to get you in? Was he not the one? I mean, when you went there, is that Barry? Yeah, yeah. So, was you, was you still at Liverpool at this time? Or no, no, I just left Liverpool. Oh, you just left? Just left. And yeah. then did he give you a call? No, no, it was. Um, so, you know, uh, basically, me and I signed with an agent at the time. I, once I left Liverpool, I signed with a certain agent who I'll get into. Took right, me okay. into Germany. Yeah. Is the agent that took <clears> Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember uh, what you he saying. knew Kevin Blackwell. So he's called Kevin Blackwell, told him I got a player. I was at Liverpool. Da, 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 da. Ah, Look right. It's okay. And, and that's uh, how you went in. Yeah, so Kevin Blackwell, I've still seen that I was at Liverpool. Whether he called Liverpool or Liverpool called him, I don't know. But basically... Oh, yeah, he would have called them. 100%. Yeah. So that basically, he shouted me into his office and he, I walk in and he's like, sit down. I'm like, right, like, what's going on? What's going on, yeah. Uh, but, and then I'm like, oh, hi, Gaffa, are you doing you right? And he's like, yeah, yeah, And he goes, right, I've heard a lot of things about you. And I'm thinking, right, okay. He goes, I've heard a lot of good and a lot of bad as well. I know that you're a really talented player, but you've got an attitude problem. Oh, my God. In my head, I'm thinking... I think you've got the wrong brother here. You know what yeah, I mean? That's yeah, yeah, you've got the wrong with, person. With, with the with the stuff that was happening Definitely. with my brother at the time. Go on, what, what else yeah. did he say? And then he's turning around like, I'm gonna, he's like, oh, I'm going to give you an opportunity, but it's down to you um, to take it if you want to take it or not. Bearing in mind, I was meant to be there for a week. So right. I was meant to be there for seven days, like Monday to Monday. He turned around and goes, you've got three, four days to prove yourself. And if you do prove yourself, there's a one-year contract on the table for you. Bearing in mind, when I'd spoke to him previously on the phone, he said, I got a week and they'd offer me a two year deal. He's now turned around like, you've got three, four days to prove yourself and there's a one year contract on the table if you want it. And then he goes, it is, that, is that, is that, is he testing you? Is he, I didn't know. What's he doing? Is, yeah, it, is so that I his, I didn't understand it. Sick way of yeah, yeah, so trying to <laughs> test you or yeah, something. So I didn't understand it. So I was just like, okay, like whatever. Um, so then he was like, yeah, um, do I make myself clear? And I was like, yeah, Gaffa, like you make, made yourself clear. And he goes, okay, now go and get changed. We are, we are in 20 minutes. So in my head, I'm thinking like, rah. And then when I've come out, it left the door open. So players like that was down the corridor, players that was on trial or they all heard it. They're like, rah, what was that like? It sounded like he was having a go at you. I'm like, right, I don't right. know. I feel like it's got me and my brother confused or something. You know what I mean? Because he's right. telling me about having an attitude problem and all this kind of stuff. Like, I'm, <laughs> Do you I'm, think he's got the wrong Yeah, I'm, like, I'm very easy to deal with. You know yeah. what I mean? So I don't I understand. <laughs> you should have asked him. Yeah. You got, did you, I did say that too many goals. I said, I said, I think you got the wrong brother. Like I thought he said, no, I've done my research. So obviously, if that's the case, then maybe someone at the club at Liverpool. is say, trying to play it off as, as yeah, a yeah, bad yeah. attitude. And, and you know what? It happens because mm -hmm. if you leave a club mm -hmm. and a particular person has it out for you mm -hmm. or whatever, yeah. whatever the case may mm -hmm. be. Now, a lot of what these clubs will do is mm -hmm. these managers, if they've got a player coming in, the first thing they'll do, if they have a good relationship, yeah. it doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. They'll call the club. Yeah, yeah. Let me speak to the manager. I've got this player here. Mm -hmm. They'll... And whoever, sometimes it's not even the manager. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's like the manager's, I don't know, some, uh, assistant coach. Yeah, yeah, it happens. Or someone else mm -hmm. who will take the call and be like, yeah, I know this player, this, this, and this. Yeah. Now, based on what you, how you left the club yeah, yeah. or what terms you yeah. left the club, mm -hmm. that was it. these guys yeah. will give a very biased yeah. opinion yeah. about you mm -hmm. as a person. Mm -hmm. So... I've seen it happen. Mm -hmm. My friends have seen it mm -hmm. uh, seen it happen. It's common. Yeah, yeah. So what's happened there is he's called the club. Yeah. Someone's give them a very biased opinion, opinion about yeah. you. And then he's gone off that as well. And he's automatically gone mm -hmm. off and yeah. start, you know, raising hellstone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, three days, yeah. this and mm -hmm. that. So yeah. you're not on a level playing field at, at, at all. all, are you? Yeah, so when I've gone in, even that some of the stuff he had me do was crazy. So I'm trying to go in as a number nine, as a striker. 
and then he put me in, in one drill where it was just me and all the defenders and it's like what's what's going on you know what right. I mean? so it's just like it's just all these little games so in the end i didn't yeah. end up signing there um going back to try and go to Sheffield United to sign let's see we meant to go there for two weeks training and signing the day before I meant to sign I get the same thing happens again I get a phone call like it was all it became like a theme right. in my life where the day before I meant to do something I get a call and just letting me down letting me down constantly yeah. so same thing happened with Sheffield United I remember the agent called me like yep they've, they've pulled out no deal on the table no trial on the table and then what happened after that Liverpool sent them a player on loan um, so obviously I know they was involved in that and then right. same thing happens with uh, with uh, Russell Slade I think late in Orient we were in League One at the time Right. same thing day before Russell Slade gives me a call at like 9pm I'm at home he's like listen McKendy um, um, I know you're a talented player this that I heard about your attitude so you need to come in and work hard and this that and I remember calling the agent I'm like look it's the same thing as what happened at Berry. Like I'm right. not gonna give him a chance. I don't want to go in. So I ended up going in to Leighton Orient. And then after that, a few months after that, it was, um, was um, where was the place I, I went? Swindon. So one, right. of my, one of my ex-teammates was at Swindon. Um, and then I've basically, he's basically got me the manager's number. I've spoke with the manager. Mandy said, yeah, I, I like working with like young up and coming players, this idea over these times, I think I was like 22, 21. Right. Um, and then he's saying like, yeah, come in and then we'll we'll give you we'll give you a trial, a fair chance and everything. Next thing I know, the day before I was meant to go down, I was meant to go down on the, I was gonna go down Sunday evening, yeah, cause the training on Monday. And then he said to me, come down, train for two weeks. And there's a deal on the table for you yeah. if you want it. Next thing I know, the manager himself is called me and he's like, yeah, um, the chairman at Swindon, and he said that he doesn't basically want you win. Wow. Okay. Do something. I'm like, okay, that's a bit of a personal Have one. Have you ever had I mean? any dealings with I the did, chairman? Till this day, I don't know what the chairman's name is. I didn't know anything. You know what I mean? So I'm like, whoa, like that's a bit of a personal one. Like, I'm right, not, okay. I've not <laughs> these times I've been out of out of football for about a year. So he's he's obviously got a reference from someone. Yeah. And, and I, I get, and I guess with these chairmen, mm -hmm. right, depending on how involved they are, mm -hmm. if they hear a player who's coming in on trial to potentially yep. get signed by the club, mm -hmm. they'll find out your name, find mm -hmm. out where you've been, mm -hmm. your history. And it's not far fetched at all for these guys to call people at clubs yeah, yeah. that you've been to. Mm -hmm. Because they, um, you know, it's a football world. They'll have some type of relationship yeah, yeah. or they'll just pick up the phone and mm -hmm. call the club and see, oh, what's this yeah. player like so and stuff. So with that situation, we found out that that chairman at the time and my ex-manager at Liverpool worked together when it was at Tottenham. Interesting. So they know they've got a personal relationship right there. And then like a couple of weeks later, that after, what happened was Liverpool sent, I think it was two or three players on loan to Twindon when it was in League One. Interesting. And then um, I ended up speaking to another ex-teammate who was trying to get his trial at Swindon. And then they kind of done the same thing to him that they did with me. And he's the agent is one that confirmed it to me. He said, look, you, you're better off looking abroad because with what's happening, you're not going to get a club. And I'm like, oh, what do you mean? He goes, well, I've been trying to actively, bear in mind, this guy's a decent agent, agent yeah. you know what I mean? Got so it's almost player. like they blacklisted you. Yeah, to an extent. I don't know how, I don't know why, because I'm not the best player in the world, you know what yeah. I mean? So it's not like I'm Messi or Ronaldo or even... You know what I mean? I'm not a world class player who will make them look stupid. I just wanted to make a living. I wanted to make a career. You know what I mean? Sometimes, you know, people people in this game, mm -hmm. sometimes they'll do things just because they can. They can, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, these yeah. these people, these coaches who, for whatever reason, yeah. had it out for you. Mm -hmm. Bear in mind, you're 18 years old, 20. Mm -hmm. Don't know why they're so fixated on you and 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 ruining yeah. any chance of a career you mm -hmm. have, but. There'll be people in power who are able to pull strings that'll yeah. do things, not yeah, yeah. because there's mm -hmm. a definitive reason of I'm doing this because of this. Yeah, They're yeah. just doing it because they can. They can, yeah, 100%. And um, they would much rather never have a situation where they hear your name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the on the Sky Sports, yeah, he's yeah. just signed this deal. It's he's quite doing well here. Setup, cause I remember because um, I had a good relationship with a lot of players when I was at Liverpool. So I remember one of the players was like a year or two younger than me. And uh, he, he remember he said one time to me, he said he mentioned my name um, to basically that manager or around it or something. And, he, and the manager turned around to me and he said, I don't, I don't, I don't want to ever mention that name around me again. Interesting. And then I'm thinking like, Why? you know what I mean? For what? I've yeah. never done anything wrong to him. 
I've not <clears> misbehaved or anything like that. You know what I mean? So it was just. It's, you know what? It's sad. It it's a sad tough, part yeah. of the game. Uh, it's a very sad part of the game because a lot of people who go into the game, yeah. uh, who get these positions, mm -hmm. are either failed footballers. Yeah, yeah. Or they have some type of resentment. Yeah. Um, to young and upcoming stars, yeah, yeah. like they they wish they were that young. Mm -hmm. This opportunity, yeah, yeah. and it sort of reflects on certain things that they yeah. did. I experienced it in my time. Managers, you know, you look at them, the way they treat you. It's like you're supposed to be here enabling my ability. Yeah, yeah, not dumbing me down. Yeah, but yeah. it feels like you're almost punishing me for something I didn't do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For the person that I am, mm -hmm. or there's always like an underlying tone. Yeah. Of, why are you doing this? Yeah. And, and it is, unfortunately, it is, it you is have people bullying, like that you know? in that 100%. game, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of them, because I've heard it from friends at other clubs and stuff like that. Um, so these things do happen, you know what I mean? Yeah. And obviously there's not many people that speak about them. Um, but yeah, so then after that, like I kind of closed off my looking in England kind of yeah. chapter. Uh, obviously, as you, you went know, abroad, yeah. we went to Germany, me and yeah. uh, by By that time, your head's fried. Oh, my head was gone like my head time. would have been Bro, fried like in, bear, don't forget it, within this time like i'm not training by the way so i've not got a club mm. um i'm at home back at my mom's now obviously i got six siblings we live in a three bedroom house there's a lot of us you know what i mean like yeah. i'm not in the best headspace i'm just depressed certain days i'm yeah. not getting up or if i do my rooms i'm in a dark room all day yeah. I'm just for months you know what i mean yeah I'd, yeah, I would get up here and there and go for my running and do my drills and stuff like that to stay in good shape. Quite sharp, yeah. But I wouldn't be like fit as I was yeah. months before that, you know what I mean? So it's um, getting yourself out of that rut. Yeah, how, but how just, you, at the time you don't notice it that you're in you're 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 going down this path. Right. You know what I mean? So this way this is when the, the depression comes in, the yeah. sleeping all day and getting up at night. Yeah. The, drinking excessively like that anything. was my thing i struggled with alcohol like badly um because it just came like my way of dealing with things i just drink mm. and just fall asleep or you know yeah. what i mean and then this is something i've never really spoke about and it was only till recently that i started telling people that look right. yeah, like i need to <clears throat> like i do have sometimes problems with like drinking and stuff like that right. so like and it stemmed from that you know right. what I mean? Um, so I was bat battling like drinking and stuff like that. So and that stemmed from all the way since when I was at Liverpool, when I had my own place, I'd, we'd have a reserve game and I wouldn't play. And in my head I'm thinking I should be playing in that, in that game. Yeah. And just, whatever. I'd go home, just drink and just sleep. And you know what I mean? These kind was, of things. Was there anyone at the club whatsoever? Nope. At the time in Liverpool. So there was no like the part, they didn't put together like a, a function nope. where they managed players, nope. mental, right nothing. Nope. So it was it's, just it's you just and the now. manager, you yeah. dealing with the manager, yeah, no only, in between. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was no in between, there was no get together, there was no, there's no, it's only just now, because I still speak to certain people still at the club, it's only just now that they've put in a player liaison. Um, not, you can talk to the players. Yeah, so like, they've they've made a thing where they've started a, a programme, I mean, if, if that makes yeah. sense. so Because um, <clears throat> they want to cover their backs now, because mental health is a, yeah, is a, a, huge, a huge issue, issue at the issue. moment. So like with the kid who, uh, the kid who was at Man City. Who unfortunately um, took his life. Yeah, so that really, really got to me as well. That was one of the big decided yeah. factors of me doing this, um, because obviously he's a local kid. Yeah. Um, some of his friends, I've seen them play and stuff like that. So, yeah. and then some of my like, Young cousins and stuff like that yeah. didn't know who he was. You know what I mean? My my stepbrother yeah. um, went to the same school, or goes to the same school like he went to, so he knows him. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's it's a closer to home kind of situation yeah. where a kid who has basically gone through a situation a situation similar to what I went through, but at a much younger age. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he was what I think it was sixteen, seventeen. Yeah. I'm lucky I went through that situation at twenty. You know what I mean? And but it's even, it's worse now. It's ex amplified exactly. with social media, social media and things like that, yeah. different platforms. Yeah. As soon as they find out you're playing for City, yeah. oh mate, if you're not a baller, yeah. you flopped. Exactly. That's the kind of chat that yeah, they yeah, have yeah. on social media. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it, like you said, it does touch a nerve, it touches home because it could have been one of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We went through the same 100%. kind of thing. That's the literally what I thought to myself. You know what, yeah, that like... God looking forbid. back on this, yeah, looking back on the situations that I found myself in, I found like <coughs> further down the line would be more things that I'll be able to speak about. Yeah. But I found myself in some dark, dark places, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And it all stemmed from 
being mentally tortured and mentally yeah. bullied. Manipulated. Man- manipulated. Vindictive when, behavior. Yeah. Made abuse to feel of power. as if you was a problem when you're not. Yeah. You know and you're I mean? labeled. Yeah. Uh, labeled as trouble when you're doing nothing wrong. You know yeah. what I mean? So these kind of things. And bear in mind, you know, you know, we're, I'm older now. I'm like 29. I say I'm older. Someone's listening to this, probably like, shut up. You're still young. <laughs> But as I'm getting older, I'm 29. I'm like, wow, t- an 18 year old kid. Yeah. Like, I I could not I could not look at an 18 year old. Yeah. Watch them do what they do. And think as an adult. And and yeah, think as an adult and have some sort of resentment against that yeah, 18 year old. Exactly. I'm almost like right, you're a kid and you need guidance. Mm-hmm. That that's my thought process. And I'm only 29. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these people in the clubs and who are in these positions of power in the game, mm-hmm. who are 34 on, had a yeah, career yeah. and stuff. Mm-hmm. Do their brains not work the same? Yeah, Do they not understand they that? They definitely know better, but it's just, I feel like a lot of people, it's a lot of selfishness and it's just toxic to the point where like, even if someone was to say like, they need to get releg- uh, regulated, it'd be like how and where would yeah. would the checks and stuff like be in place? You know what I mean? Obviously, Easy, still... like you say, but players liaison, mm-hmm. you know, you have a middle ground. Mm-hmm. You have someone who deals with the, the mental yeah. of a player. Mm-hmm. You have someone who checks in. It's it, it's a thirty k yeah, job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One person could yeah. do it mm-hmm. for how many other people? Yeah, but with a club, let's say the size of of Liverpool or the Man United, Man Cities, I think after that, Man City hired two player liaisons to right. deal with their young players. Right after which, that incident. Yeah, but the City are a billion dollar club. Liverpool's a billion dollar yeah. club. You know what I mean? The, it's so, not like a, a HR. I mean, they, they might have a HR function for the business yeah, side, mm-hmm. but, but they need a need human the resource players. function yeah, yeah, yeah. for the players. Hundred percent. But it's almost overlooked because you know what? I'll be honest with you, unless you're in top, top level. And even then, when you're in a top, top level, it's the same thing. But they're yeah. treated as cattle. They're treated yeah, as yeah. assets. Mm-hmm. Not humans. Not not young kids yeah. trying to live a dream. Mm-hmm. They're assets. Yeah. And, you know, this this is not for all coaches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've met some decent coaches. Mm-hmm. But in in that world, yeah, yeah. there's some really, really, really questionable things. Mm-hmm. Uh, going on yeah, yeah. in terms of how players have been manipulated, mm-hmm. the psychological bullying, yeah, yeah. And vid- vindictiveness, yeah, yeah. and just it needs to get checked. Yeah, 100%. So yeah, so then that happened. Obviously, I've gone on, gone abroad. By that, by then, my head was just gone. Um, yeah, it would I was, be. I wasn't fit. You know what I mean? I did well in terms of like playing. I scored in the games and stuff. So the club, but the club, the club got back to us. But it's a and, question of are you at full capacity yeah, mentally? Yeah, exactly. So I wasn't, I was probably functioning at like 50%, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, but then I went on to Germany again. And then this is where like the topics of racism comes in. Um, dealt with some racial um, situations, should I yeah. say. Uh, I was at one club, um, trained there. I think I, I'd been there like five or six days. Yeah. I was meant to be there for 10 days. I'm thinking, look, I'm going to do, I'm doing really well. I'm going to sign read the terms and conditions of the of the, the contracts and everything. And the agent that I was with, he was based in Belgium. So we were just waiting for him to come to the club in like three days and we was going to sign the deal. And then the first team had a game um, in the afternoon. So I trained with the reserves in the morning that day, a club called uh, FC Chemitz. Yeah. Um, I so I trained with them in the morning. And um, when we got there, there was a player like he just he was just acting weird around me the whole morning like really giddy and stuff like that so I was just like whatever I think it was a year below me and um, we was doing like a rondo like a passing little mm. position game and then I'd done a trick where I went to pass it to him but I reversed the ball and then uh, so it made the player that was trying to tackle me look silly but made him look stupid because well he went for it as well and then as that's happened he t- the, the kids turned around to me and he's gone like basically, I'm gonna say it, but he turned around and he goes, "Pass me the ball, nigger," like that. Wow. So in my head, I'm like, I, I was, I didn't know what to think at the time. I was just like, "Whoa!" Like, did you yeah. just really say that? So I've turned around to him. I said, "Yo, like the word you just said is a Don't really bad that, word. Yeah. Don't say it again." Um, <coughs> Racial then, slurs. Yeah. So then, but then he started like giggling to his mates. So in my head, I'm thinking, like, Do you know what? Like, you're not yeah, here yeah, for yeah. them, whatever. And then, um, and then he's then um, after that we finished the round we was going to like into a passing drill and then uh, he's come behind me and he's put his hand over me and he goes uh he said something something he said uh, you know what i mean my nigger like that again oh, so wow. in my head I'm, i said to him i turned around to him i said and i've like kind of like not pushed him but i've like moved him away i was like look don't say that like yeah. it's a really bad word and like just don't say yeah, it again because you're really pissing me off yeah. yeah next minute 
is like this this is where like my reaction was warranted because the guy literally walks up to my face and then then he just literally looked at me and he said what's up nigga like that in my face and so it's, he knew he knew it was wind, yeah it was winding me up. up but at these times like I'm going through a hell of a lot of things. Yeah, it's just... I'm not working, my head's not at full capacity. I'm stressed out and I've just seen red. So I just remember just grabbing the kid, like strangling him and yeah. got him on the floor. And then other players have like got on top Jumped of us. In, yeah. And then I've just said like, fuck this. Yeah, got the ball. I'm done. Kicked, I'm done. I'm yeah. like, I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. And um, went, got changed, showered in a taxi back to my hotel room. Yeah. I called the agent. I'm like, look, <clears throat> don't come in two days. Yeah. Bought me a flight. I want to go home now. I'm not staying here. Da, da, da. Looking back on it now, I should probably shouldn't have done that because the deal was there. But, but like I said, it, I shouldn't have to deal with this. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, some people might say, no, you had your opportunity. Go there, play. Yeah. But equally... Is it okay to just call someone and they go yeah. in front of their face, someone what? who's just you know signed I mean? for no reason? Yeah. Is it okay to just ignore the racial abuse? Is it okay to just ignore the blatantness? Yeah, the, yeah exactly. The ignorance. Yeah. So, you know, I think you'll get a split. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll you'll get a split. Um, you know, people one side yeah. will go here, people mm-hmm. one side. Yeah. For me, unfortunately, racism, until it's addressed, Yeah aggressively yeah yeah it will always be a problem in this mm-hmm. game 100 percent, and it, and that stems down because you have racism and then you have stereotype yeah you stereotype in black people for what they are yeah, yeah exactly and you know what england's great for this is um this is based on my own experience yeah so people might have different experience my own experience england's great for maybe not using the the extreme of nigger, black, this yeah, and all yeah. that, but they will stereotype you and they'll box so you in. Weird, are you, you're gonna feel a certain type yeah. of way. And they will, they'll box you in, stereotype you, and they will marginalize you based on who you are, where you're from, yeah, color yeah. of skin. Very true. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got an attitude because he's yeah. black. Yeah. Or, or black boys mm-hmm. do that. Yeah, because that, that used to happen to it's us. my whole life. At one point you had, the man who was getting mad at us for using the word bro. Yeah. In, tra- in, like, in the change rooms and stuff. Yeah. Like, you know how like we joke about yeah, yeah. bro, what you're saying, da, 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 da. like just for using slang and using yeah. the word bro, like we we we'd get told off for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know how bad like how, how mad that is. Yeah. Like, so you're already being stereotyped. Yeah, like you're already thrown mad. in the box. You know what I mean? It's really really mad. Like um, uh, so, it's, it's unfortunate. And you know what's interesting? You know, touching on the uh, all the incidents that's happened with the European Super League, mm-hmm. the amount of energy, right? Yeah. They've got for the European Super League. It's crazy. Oh, they everything's been yeah. thrown at you. Mm-hmm. The government's been yeah. thrown at you. Crazy. It's a it's a crusade. Yeah. Even people like James Corden are coming out and speaking about it. Why do you speak about racism? Yeah, a huge crusade. The, Where's the same energy yeah. when we're talking about subjects of people getting banana skins thrown at them? Crazy, bro. At a at a big football venue. Where's that same energy? Mm-hmm. You know, and I understand some 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 no, there's a pundit. I can't remember. I don't. I don't think it was Gary Neville, but there was a pundit that goes, uh, Graham Souness. Yeah. He said he said something along the lines, and it half annoyed me. He said something along the lines of, you know, I'm not. He doesn't know not enough about it. Like he doesn't know. He's not educated in that area. Which so that's it? probably why over the years he's not been really able to, you know, come out and express his views and that. But rubbish rubbish i'll tell you why it's rubbish (laughs) when something's wrong it's wrong Wrong. period exactly whether you know enough about it or or not you can tell if it's wrong period Mm -hmm. so that that whole lingo and chat rubbish to me yeah yeah Mm -hmm. because (laughs) they want to come take your precious esl premier league exactly oh you're throwing everything at Mm -hmm. it exactly but when it comes to racism that's been around longer than football by the way yeah way longer longer than football longer than premier league Mm -hmm. longer than all these institutions they don't have the same energy. Yeah, at all. So it's it's food for thought. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's what I, I, I definitely agree with that. When people say, oh, I don't know enough about it. It doesn't make sense because for me, it's like, it's just wrong. It's wrong. It doesn't take anything for you to, <laughs> yeah. to realise that it's yeah, wrong. Yeah, you don't you need to take a degree yeah. on why racism is bad. Yeah. 
it's just bad. Yeah. And I think with a lot of people, they, they feel like they have to address the police brutality and these things. No, you just, you have to come out and acknowledge that it's wrong. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. If you can't see that, then I don't know if you- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play your sight. So yeah. it's another cop out. It's, it's mm -hmm. a cop out. It's a great cop out to be like, oh, you know, we're not knowledgeable yeah. in it. I can never understand where you're what, coming from. What do you think about the, um, the taking the knee? Taking a knee. I think the taking a knee was good for the first week or two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After that, it's it just became ridiculous. a whole. Yeah. Right, we'll let we'll let them have that. Yeah. Do you and know what I mean? Yeah, and I also I also don't personally like the taking a knee gesture. Yeah, yeah. I don't, like you shouldn't be taking a knee to racism. Yeah. You should be standing up to it. So that's why I agreed with what Wilfred Zaha did or yeah. said yeah. when he stood up. You yeah, know yeah. I mean? so it's like it's like it's about time we move past yeah, it. That's that's the whole. To, yeah, you, you're correct because let's move past it and do some stuff. Yeah, now. yeah. Mm -hmm. do, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let's do things mm -hmm. to change the more game. Actionable things, instead more of, actionable yeah. things instead of just yeah, passive aggressive, yeah, yeah. meaningless things. Yeah. Really now because hold these institutions accountable. accountable. Hold hold UEFA accountable. Hold one, these clubs one accountable. Of, one of the stats to me, which is mad, is a third of players in the Premier League are black. Mm. So that's one in three players are black. Yeah. We've seen Raheem being um, Racial, yeah. racially abused. abused. Yeah. One of the best players in the Premier yeah, League, yeah. one of England's Inviting best players. Newspapers, yeah. But, yeah. I'm not even going to name the newspaper. Yeah. I think the we the scum. Yeah, scum. So we don't, like the newspapers bullying him. Yeah. Over like rival fans bullying him. Like it's, it's not even just bullying him, like racially abusing yeah, him. Like yeah, yeah. The, the thing what happened with the Chelsea fans and yeah. things like that. And he's one of England's best players. Yeah. And this can happen to him in England itself. In England, yeah. It's 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 crazy. It shouldn't yeah, be happening. They, they won't, so have, when they these, won't have that energy yeah, to try and cut it out When these things happen, though. the likes of Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher and James Corden, all these people that are coming out now and trying to fight against the ESL. Yeah. Their energy is like here right for the ESL. There, but yeah, when the best players in the country. It's about here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. You know, and this is not knocking, we're not trying to say Gary Neville and all these people, they're inherently racist. Let's just get, you know, yeah, facts straight. Yeah, it's not that, no. It's just ignorant, it's more ignorant racist. more than anything. It's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a mix of a few things. Yeah. It's a mix of ignorance. It's a mix of, um, not being black and understanding mm -hmm. how traumatizing it can be for most black people. Yeah, yeah. And also it's, the reality is we have to live with that. Yeah. And we have to live with it and manage to live with it yeah, yeah. in our day-to-day -day lives. 100%. Now it's so it's so messed up that we have to we have to conform yeah. with the different levels of racism. Yeah, yeah. Very true. And it's a mix of them things. Yeah. That why we're saying you have the energy for ESL, mm -hmm. but we're talking about racism. Mm -hmm here and yeah. the energy's here turn it up something that actually affects people's lives yeah you know turn I mean? it up Do we, generations mm -hmm. of people are affected by this Definitely. every day they have to conform in their normal yeah. lives mm -hmm. most countries they don't have to conform because they just get abuse right there yeah, and right then. There and then yeah but um yeah it's it's astonishing yeah and it's in the game mm -hmm. no bringing it all the way right back bringing it back to football yeah, yeah. it's in the game yeah because people are still going through hard struggles because they're marginalized they're 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 seen as they're stereotyped mm -hmm. a certain way yeah yeah and um it's definitely there mm -hmm. and that's that's what we're trying to say 100 percent. but yeah so like just going forward obviously like i said um coming back i've tried to yeah. play non-league here and there yeah obviously it's respect to people that do it i've got friends that play it yeah people that are managers that i'm friends with that do it but for me it just wasn't for me um i struggled to really adapt to it training yeah. twice a week in the evenings and then playing on a Saturday. Yeah. I didn't feel like my body was getting enough because <clears throat> I went from the age of 12 training every single day until I was 21. Yeah. So now training How twice How old a are week. you now? I've just turned 27. So 27. So my question is, when did you, when did it become like apparent, all right, this is it. I'm, I'm getting out of the game. Looking back on it now properly, when did you really lose your head? Because I can tell you vividly. Oh, when I lost my oh, I lost my head years ago. <laughs> that, what would you say years about twenty and twenty one? I'd say twenty three, so about four years ago. Twenty three. Where so. like, to me, it was like okay, cool. Like if I'd yeah. made a decision back then, if I'd turned yeah. and I really said, look, you, you would have had time. 
I would have um like I'd be doing way better than I am right now yeah. in in terms of my personal life. Yeah. Um. But it's because, like I said, because of the experiences, the players that I trained with, play with, all that kind of stuff. Um. It really um. It get it keeps you going. You yeah. know what I mean. So being able to train with the Luis Suarez and the Steven Gerrards yeah. and the Raheem Sterlings and Daniel Sturridge and Coutinho and seeing these people day in, day out at the best, you know what I mean? Because like I said, players show their best in training. Yeah. There are certain things you'll be able to do in training that you'll never be able to do in a game. <clears throat> yeah. So you can see the best of these players. So being able to see that a lot of times kept me going. Yeah, motivated you too. Yeah, motivated you got a taste. It's like we said at the start. Yeah, I got that taste that of it. Taste. Yeah, it's like, it's like a drug. You yeah. know what I mean? Like playing football and like the highs in football are like a drug. Ah, you'll yeah. ask anyone like the best feelings when you get in football, you'd pay a ridiculous amount of money yeah. to feel that feeling again. Yeah. But it's one of them where once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. Um, And then for me, looking back on it, I just wish that I kind of made the decision to, to, not quit, but to, to stop pursuing the professional side of it. I wish I'd done that much sooner, yeah. if that makes sense, because it deceived me a lot of stress, heartache. a lot of heartache and things like that. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I just wish that, obviously going forward, I know things are being done, whether right. it's enough or not, it's another story. I know that things are being done, even at Liverpool. Um, yeah. I'm in contact with certain people at the club and they do ask me for my opinion on certain ideas and things. Yeah. And I do say, look, I think this will work well, this won't work well. And I'll obviously speak about it because of my own personal experience. Yeah, um, and, and that's exactly why we're doing what we're doing yeah, now yeah, because 100%. we want to we wanna raise the conversation. Mm -hmm. We want more conversations to be had because some when people are talking about a certain yeah, yeah. topic, you tend to find a lot of other braver people will come out and make actions yeah, from yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Let's let's get people talking about it yeah. and let's help some of these organizations yeah. be the front runners of making internal change mm -hmm. and change in general yeah. with how this sport and the industry in Europe in yeah. particular works. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. I'm not the first about America. Um, but in Europe, yeah, how it works, UK. Mm -hmm. You know, let's try and get the conversation going to yeah. get some leaders mm -hmm. in these clubs, yeah, yeah. organizations, mm -hmm. to make a change and make something yeah, happen. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, you know, a question for you. I, I asked at the start. I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'll be honest. From my perspective and experience of football, it's very hard for me to talk about football. Yeah, and uh, I still don't think I'll really go into detail in mind. But um, if you could go back, could you? Mm -hmm. Would you do it all again, and would you do it different? I'd do it all again and do it different. Um, so I've, I've had a lot of people ask me like, oh, if you could go back, would you still play for football? I'd be like, yeah, 100%. It's mm -hmm. one of the best things I've ever done. Um, I'd just make a lot of different decisions mm -hmm. whilst at the club and after. Right. Um, so one of them is agents. Right. And the kind of control of the power that some play or like that I I gave them as a player yeah. and that some players till this day I see given certain agents. Um so I'd be more I'd be in more control of my of my career. Yeah. Um I'd have probably left much sooner or I'd have probably pressed a lot more to leave. Even though obviously yeah. like I said Liverpool told me that they weren't ready to pay me off. I should have been on their case every day. Every single day from the moment I came back from Northampton to yeah. pay me off. Yeah. Because I think if I did, they'd have done it. Yeah. And then I'd have been free to go somewhere else. But in your defense. Yeah. First experience. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Dream club. Yeah. You know, you're not really thinking of that. Yeah, it's a team that I support as well. So it's like the long the longer I can stay here, the better, the better for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. like I said, nowadays we have like under twenty threes and stuff like that. So yeah. And it's because you love football so much. Honestly, a few years back I used to think, wow, if if Norwich City told me now come just come play some under 23 games yeah. won't pay you <laughs> i'd be like yeah sure yeah, I'll come. Hundred, hundred, because you the love thing. the game see this is this is where it gets even like this is where it really hurt me as well because the year after i got released i was still 2021 20, right. they turned the under 21 to the under 23s so then what happened after that was like certain players that got released we're going back and still training with the reserves and playing oh wow reserve games so it was like local lads 
Yeah. I never got that chance or whatever. And then yeah, you know, I was struggling, but obviously because at all, and I, I tried to hit up a couple <clears> of people to try and see if I could come in and train or even to do X, Y, Z. Never happened. You know that. what I mean? Um, obviously I had a lot of good people at the club, like, like the physios, for example, yeah. looked after me. They made my experience. They're amazing. Some of the sports scientists and nutritionists and yeah. you know what I mean? The kit men and all that kind of stuff. Amazing. But it's just like one or two actual like coaches or the deci actual decision makers right. who basically kind of like ruined it for me to an extent. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, because they hold the most influence. They hold the most they? power, yeah. But yeah, so that did happen <clears throat> where certain players went back, trained with them, helped him to get fit to go on trials. Yeah. They even spoke to them and helped them to get trials. While for me, they was holding me back. So, right. you know, I, to me doesn't make sense. <clears throat> you know, this this old segment tells me, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of people getting in contact and talking about this, but. The experience that you've had, I'm sure some other people have had the same experience. Yeah, hundred percent. I've had um, like younger players hitting me up, so people that are like you get kids that are 15, 16, yeah. some of them 17, 18, and 19 hitting me up and saying, "Look, we've seen the podcast that I done with the front left guys. Um, we didn't know you'd been through this, but I'm yeah. through something similar. Wow, so, okay. like I always said, I'm not, um, I'm not a celebrity. I'm not." Yeah, a big public figure, anything like that. I'm very much approachable. Yeah, um, down to earth. So if you are someone that's struggling mentally or through the mental side of the game or anything like that, don't yeah. be afraid to one reach out to people close to you or even just hit, hit me hit up us. on social yeah, media. Hit up. Reach out to me because there's a lot of players that I speak to now, younger players, or they hit me up for some advice or something like that, and I'll do my best to get back yeah. to you as soon as possible and I'll give you the best advice possible. Um to whatever your situation is yeah. because sometimes I know it more than anyone that sometimes all you need is just someone to speak to yeah. or someone to um, talk a bit of sense into you, you know yeah. what I mean? And I wish, I wish I had that yeah. when I was 19, 20, 21. Or you had like a platform where people were talking yeah. about things you're exactly. going through now. And, yeah. mm -hmm. and one thing I'd encourage listeners to do is if you've not got the courage right now, that's fine. Listen, it's absolutely fine. You're probably fighting your own battles at the moment. And, um, you know, no one can really understand your own battles until yeah. they're in your shoes. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to reach out to people yeah. and want people to reach out to us mm -hmm. who are having these same experiences yeah. that we're talking about, who can relate. And the whole point of the uh, Athlete Culture podcast and the other segments we're going to be covering in the yeah, next yeah. couple of weeks and the guests that we're getting is to show you that people are going through the same stuff yeah, yeah, 100%. you are mm -hmm. and we are trying to talk about it so you can feel safe to talk about it with someone get help or because this world is much much bigger than yeah. you think yeah yeah and then like i said one of the things what when we spoke to um corey before yeah he said is like there's also more to life than football yeah which obviously I've realized as well, because like I said, it's a short career. By the time you're 35, yeah. most people won't be playing it professionally. And you've still got your whole life ahead. And you've still got your whole life ahead. You've yeah. still got another 40, 50 years left. So that was also one of the things that made me be able to make that decision for myself. And like I said, not everyone makes it. And I was always aware of that. Right. But for me, it was just it, how things were done behind the scenes, if yeah. that makes sense. Um. But like I said, look, there's always more to life than football. So like I said, everyone goes struggles through mental health, whether yeah. it's professional uh, athletes, whether it's celebrities, whether it's the average man in your, yeah. on your estate, or whatever it is, the electrician, the, the plumber, whatever. Like everyone struggles through different things and it's different factors as well. It's not yeah. it's not the same thing that triggers it in everyone. It's, it's all, always different things, but... Yeah. Like I said, if you can speak, speak out, speak to people and just have someone there listening to you, yeah. then it, it'll be a much better experience for everyone. You know much, what I mean? Much, so, much better. Yeah. Just someone listening. Definitely. And um, yeah, you know, tune into our next episodes. Yeah. You know, one of the, one of the things we'll, we'll always do in our episodes, we, we've got like a three do's and three don'ts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, our thing is just giving back and dropping a little bit of knowledge for Therefore. people listening in, mm -hmm. parents to kids who are going through grassroots all the way to professional football. So, you know, based on your experience, Enoch, and based on things you know now, what are three things you would tell kids, parents, mm -hmm. 
agents, yeah. um, even coaches, coaches listening in who yeah. need to reevaluate mm -hmm. their purpose of being yeah, in the yeah. game. Mm -hmm. What are three things would you say, you know, absolute must and three also don'ts? Yeah. Um, you can give any perspective, co yeah. coach, parents, mm -hmm. players. So three absolute do's for, I'd say for, cause I didn't really have that. So I'd say like family support. So if you've got an uncle, an auntie, yeah. a granddad, brother or whatever, someone who's older than you and like say, and they've got a player in the family, like the support, the family support is a major key. So even if it's your mom taking you to football yeah. and stuff like that, cause like all I had was just me taking myself, you know what I mean? So I was yeah. just, so when it, when things got difficult, I didn't really know no who one to, to turn, turn to. to. Yeah. Okay. So if you've got that in your family, that's the number one support. Um, and even when they get to the stage, when if they're in the youth team on the reserves or whatever, like still be involved to some degree. Yeah. Don't just leave it to an agent or someone like, yeah, the agent might have, might be the one that's uh, doing the contract negotiations and stuff. Might but have you his as, own agenda yeah, too. Yeah, that's true, which we've seen it happen many yeah, times. But happen. you as a parent, you should know kind of what's happening. And so your child is 23, 24, 25, yeah. they can make their own adult decisions, then you should- Still be involved. Yeah, be involved and advise them, you know what I mean? Because that's all you can do. Yeah. Um, another do, um, I'm trying to think in terms of do's, is but to speak out. Like, Sweet. I was if, just gonna say, that was speak, on my mind to yeah, say, but I was waiting to for you to speak out, say. like, because for me, there's, there's plenty of times where looking back on it now, whether it's confronting the coach and saying, look, what you've said or what you've done is is wrong. Yeah. Um, is something that I'd definitely, I'd say for, for, for people to just definitely speak out. Be brave enough yeah, to speak brave, out and, yeah. and, and um, express yeah. how you feel in that yeah. moment. Like, ex obviously don't explode on people, but express how you yeah. feel and if you're upset about it let the other person know that they've upset you you know yeah, what yeah. i mean and let them know that they're it is wrong what they've done you know because yeah. I, mean? I feel like if i did do that then maybe you would have it would have maybe segue to conversation important conversations yeah 100 yeah, percent. so yeah let definitely speaking out is one speak up yeah. Uh, yeah speak speaking up and then the other one would just be um I know it's cliche and a lot of people say it, but it's just to enjoy your time right. playing football because it could end in many different ways. It could be for sure. a situation that I've out of your control. It could be an injury. Yeah. It could be a manager having it in for you. Yeah. It could be health issues. We've yeah. seen a friend of mine recently is young, he's only 23, got forced to retire due to heart problems. So like these things happen, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it's just about in, enjoying it and just being, being in the moment, being in the moment and being yeah. free with it. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, so definitely that, that'd be my thing. Having the right the right form of support, yeah. speaking up and speaking out whenever things are done wrong towards you, not yeah. be quiet because if the, the more quiet you are, you're enabling- you're The worst it is. Yeah, yeah. basically that, that happened. Um, and enjoying then- Enjoying it. Yeah, and just enjoying it. And the three don'ts for me would be, don't drink, <laughs> learn it from me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, from yeah, me. no, that's a serious yeah, one. Up until, Stay like, away from uh, alcohol. Yeah, alcohol, like it literally messes up like a lot of things for you. Yeah. Not just in terms of like football, even in, in, in your outside life. Yeah, it's too physical and stuff. mental, yeah, isn't it? It's too, it like, absolutely drains your mental. So definitely for me, it's something that obviously I struggle with, but um, drinking, like excessively, so right. like obviously you can have a little pint here and there or whatnot, but excessive drinking is definitely something I'd advise against. Um, what else? Don't. Putting too much trust. Yeah, that's I a good one like, actually. Yeah, I feel like putting too much trust into people, hoping that they'll have your best interest. Yeah. From what I've seen in football, it doesn't always work out for the best. I like that. Um, I like that one. The reason why I like that one, I'm big on expect nothing yeah, from anyone. Because mm -hmm. someone can tell you I'm going to do X, Y, Z for you. Because that happened to me yeah. a lot of times. Like, we're going to do this, we're going to do that yeah. for you. Or do, and then it's not happened. Yeah. And because I've put my all into that, I've dropped certain other things where it's yeah. really, when this doesn't come into fruition, it's really, really yeah. uh, screwed me over. 
Um, a big one for me. The, that, I like that one so much because the secret to peace for me is mm -hmm. expecting absolutely nothing yeah. from no one. Yeah, yeah. And then I think that's what that's one of the things where obviously a lot of players the they play football because they want to be successful in life, you know, yeah. because there's rewards in football yeah. and things like this. And I really looked at it and I thought to myself, like, why do I want to play football? Because yeah. I enjoy it more than anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I looked at it and I'm like, you know, I can be successful in life in other ventures yeah, yeah, in other and ways other stuff. and stuff. So that's why I have took the decision to stop pursuing the professional football dream yeah. and work on other things because I'll still be as content, you know what I mean? Right. Um, I'm 27 and I've got years ahead of me. Years. If I start lifetime. working on something now, by the time I'm <clears> 35, <throat> when most people usually retire, I could build an absolute whole monster lifetime. of, of, God of willing, something, you know what I mean? So Stay healthy, yeah, whole lifetime. Exactly. So that's why I think that, that also, I think people need to realise that, that there's a lot more to life than yeah. football, but there also there's a lot more to them doing football. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize it that like there's a lot more to their personality. More talent. There's more, yeah. Unhidden like, talents. A friend of mine, uh, David Polly, he's obviously he was, we went to school together, me, him, and Raheem. Him and Raheem lived together in Diggs. Mm. I lived around the corner. He played for England under 16s, 17s, 18s. Yeah. Played for Liverpool, played for Wolves talented, played abroad, you know what I mean? All that kind of stuff, experienced the world, lived in the Maldives for a bit for six months, like yeah. everything. And then got injured about two and a half years ago. Bearing in mind when we was in school, he used to draw all the time. So really talented in art, right. but obviously took football up. And then for years, he even said himself, like he thought there was, the football was it for him. But then now, because he had his injury and basically the chance of him playing football were really slim. Right. And it would have took him so long to get back fit. It just started taking his art a bit more serious. Right. And now he's, he's a full-time artist, you know what I mean? He's absolutely smashing it with his yeah. business. Do you know what, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna get him to come on yeah. an episode because his story is really interesting. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, there's more to life than football. There's yeah. more to footballers than football. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. said, my friend, he's um, like as a full-time artist now. Yeah. Well, two years ago. Hidden talents hidden that they don't talents. know about, yeah. yeah. Two years ago, he was playing professional football. He's got an amazing CV, played for Wolves, played for Liverpool. it would be a very England. interesting conversation exactly. to have with. So, have with. Yeah, but yeah, that, those are great ones. So don't drink, mm -hmm. um, don't expect anything from anyone. And, and, and what's your last? Just enjoying it. And just enjoying it. What's yeah. your last? Oh, don't. don'ts. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oof. Last don'ts, just a. I know, don't perspective. Can't even think. Um, Here's a good one mm. from just on, from listening to your story. Don't take it for granted. That's one. Yeah. <clears throat> don't take the yeah. opportunity you have. There was a point where I did take a lot of, I, I did take being at Liverpool for granted during the good times. Yeah. I thought it would always be there. Yeah. And then because I was doing well at the time, I thought me doing well here would grant me the pass to go somewhere else yeah, and yeah. do well. You know what I mean? But then six months later, yeah. I'm in the absolute mud because you didn't reset your brain. Yeah. Like you you almost, when you're in situations like that, you have to always reset yourself and be yeah, like, yeah. doesn't matter what they're doing or what success a club's getting, mm -hmm. I need to make a name for myself. Yeah, I you need to your do own this. Path. And then someone who's, I'm actually going to try and see if I can get, we're going to get him on is Raheem Sterling. Yeah. Because I remember we used to speak all the, like, so, so half of the things that he's done now, he used to talk about it when he was 15. Right. So he's won the Prem, is it maybe two, two or three times yeah. now. He used to say he'd win the Prem yeah. when he was 15. Yeah. No one else in our team was saying anything was like that. that like, so yeah. he had a, a forward vision. So, uh, yeah, but some people would be like, obviously we always knew he'd play in Liverpool's first team, but we was yeah. like, Liverpool weren't going to win the Prem anytime soon. We was yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Maybe he's, he's like, no, nah, no, nah, trust me, one way or another, I'm going to win the Prem one day. Yeah. He's done it. He's made his debut before he was 18. He called that. He done, there's so many things that he, he did before or whatever, because yeah. that's because he, <clears throat> he knew he was on his own path, you know what I mean? Right. He didn't care what his teammates yeah. were doing. He didn't care what this person, that person were doing. He knew, okay, cool, this is my mission. Yeah, I need to do this. Da, 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 da. I think a lot of players need to get into that similar yeah. kind of uh, mind frame. <clears throat> of that. You, know, you know Raheem very personally. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know him personally at all, but I do sense uh, a, a great level of focus with him. Yeah. Just, you know, especially with the bat like he's taking. Um, and also with the abuse he's taken, mm -hmm. 
he just seems like a solid. He, yeah, he seems like, like his mental is solid. Yeah, yeah. It rains, um, so like, he'd be a very, very, very mentally strong. Yeah, he's it's got an elite weird. level of focus. Even the, actually, do you know, I'm gonna definitely try and get him on because yeah. there's even like certain stories of when we were younger and we was like playing just the, the way he'd analyze his own game yeah. like the mental focus he had if he had a bad game yeah like the, the bounce back ability right. all that kind of stuff and even how we dealt with stuff that is outside of football yeah is <clears throat> so it, he's got some gems to drop yeah 100 really, yeah, i think uh, also for the ability that he possesses to yeah. be that focused it's, it's almost scary you don't really right. see it you know when At you very get, young age yeah well. you don't when you get players that are really talented Mm -hmm. They're usually off the field. They're usually not focused or they usually yeah. mess up. And there's plenty of examples yeah. of that. But he was focused and he had raw talent. Yeah. And then he w and he always worked to improve. You know yeah. what I mean? Always worked to improve. Like before training, he'd, he'd be like, oh, come, let's go. We'd take some cones yeah. outside. 10, 15 minutes. Like always worked to improve and always focus. He, like, it's almost like he knew his mission. Right. Whilst I feel like even with myself, with a lot of our players, we just worked hard and hoped for the best right. that things would work out well. With right. him, it's almost like he had a target. He had like granular detail yeah, of how he, how how he wanted it. So, target. which obviously you can see now yeah. because of the kind of career that he's having. So, of course. But yeah, definitely. And if um, you do hear this, Raheem, jump on. Yeah, no, 100%. I'm going <laughs> to give him a shout. I'm going to give him a shout very Come soon. drop some gems. Definitely. You know? So, um, so uh, no, um, what, what a great way to sort of end that segment. Yeah. Uh, again, you know, and I'll shout out the sort of social media handles. Yeah, so the social media handles, we're going to be on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok. Uh, so it's all at underscore athlete culture. Yeah. And uh, we'll put it all in the links in the description, yeah. in the bios, everything. We're going to be very active over the next few weeks. Um, from now, leading all the way up to the, to the Euros, Euros yeah. and beyond, we're going to get a lot of exciting guests. Yeah. Mainly to start with, we're going to be footballers. In the future, we're going yeah. to have boxers, um, MMA fighters, yeah. rugby players. We've got a lot of interesting stories from yeah. people in all sports um, to share with you. So definitely be ready and tune in for them ones coming up in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Definitely. 100%. Thanks for listening. Uh, see you soon. Cheers.